Are you ready? From the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden, welcome to another edition of Adams Cable Channel 7 High School Football, featuring the Western Wayne Wildcats and the Mid Valley Spartans. Brought to you by Adams Cable Service, Figlamini Drugstore, Carbondale, locally owned and trusted since 1929. Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Child. Nick's Excavating and Paving, Carbondale. By your one-stop lumber and hardware center, the Waymart Building Center. By your Napa Auto Parts Store, Tonkin Auto Supply, Carbondale. White's Crossing Sports Shop, Main Street Sunoco, Carbondale. Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center, Carbondale. NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Homes with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. The starting lineups for today's game are brought to you by Roselle Department Store in Carbondale. It's time for football as the Western Wayne Wildcats face the Mid-Valley Spartans. With the pregame show and the call of today's game, here's Nick Homick, Glenn Muskowski, and Steve Young. Guys! Table Channel 7, Monday Night High School Football. As today, we are at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Varden as the Wildcats of Western Wayne will face the Mid-Valley Spartans. Along with Glenn Muskowski, I'm Steve Young. Great to have you with us. It's a cold night for high school football. Temperatures by uh, the middle of the game will dip down into the 40s. And Glenn, we should have a good game here tonight. Mid-Valley likes to run the football. Western Wayne likes to throw the football, so it should be a dandy. Well, yeah, I think, uh, Steve, if you look at both teams they're pretty comparable they're both struggling a little bit to can maintain leads but you're right uh, mid valley with tom said he likes to run the ball uh haynes likes it uh, haynes is a, is a good player uh and there and i tell you what it's it's going to be a knock them down drag them out i think i think the team that comes up with the better defense might be the winner tonight so we are set to bring you Monday night high school football here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden. Coming up next here on Adams Cable Channel 7. Football. Everyone is looking for ways to save money today. The total home packages from Adams Cable Service are a great way to do that. Starting at $66.99 per month, you get cable, high-speed internet, and unlimited phone service. You are probably paying that much for one service right now. Call Adams Cable Service today and ask about the total home packages with cable, internet, and phone starting at $66.99 per month. Adams Cable Service has a package to meet your needs and it's the smartest way to save money. Call Adams today. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an $8.95 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where you you're not just a number, you're family. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Ball. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. We are here with the head coach of New Valley Smartens, Dave Rebar. Coach, 
three people uh, left on offense, four people on defense. Quite of a young, inexperienced team. How is your team progressing so far? Well, I'm getting better every week. You know, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never had so much fun. The kids are very, very responsive. Again, we have a whole bunch of young guys. Today we're starting a, starting a freshman. He's a tough kid. So but our goal is very, very simple. Just get better every minute. Well, that's it. I'm sure you are. You have a nice running back in the time setting. Yeah. You're not going to hurt yeah, you. Yeah, you no, know, Corey's doing great. You know, and, and the thing is with, with all of our guys, the big thing was this. Stop coaching so much X's and O's and so much of, uh, you know, we got to win, we got to do this, we got to win. Because it's, it's, it's a quick fix society this year, you know, for, for every, every year. Our philosophy is let's build a team, let's build memories, let's teach you the fundamentals because, I mean, the coach we have and where we go and travel, we're teaching fundamentals so the kids can have fun Friday night. Well, I'll tell you what, in, 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 in your hands, it's going to be fine. I don't know. And, and good, have a good game tonight. <laughs> right, thank you so much. We're here with uh, Don McDonough, head coach of the Western Wayne Wildcats. Coach, record one and two, but you played very, very well in every one of your games that you had. You had the lead in two of the games that you got beat late in the game. How are your kids handling all that? Uh, you know, we're, we're frustrated. We really are. And I think uh, I'm hoping the kids uh, have a, a turnout, a, a breakout night tonight, you know. I, I tell them, and I, you know, I don't want to sound, uh, you know, cocky as a coach, but I really think we're about four plays, five plays away from being undefeated. Well, right? oh, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, uh, we had the game against with Tunkanic. You had five, five touchdowns called back. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be frustrating in it, itself. It, it is. Um, we we have to do a better job of, you know, taking care of the little things, uh, penalties, some silly penalties, and obviously the turnovers. But I think we worked hard on, on the kids all week, and under the circumstances, I think uh, they're gonna have a good night. I, I think they will also. And, and, and one last question: What do what do you need to do to win this game tonight? Uh, Take care of the little things. Take, okay. care, of the, take care of the turnovers. You yeah. know, I, I think uh, if we do that, we'll be fine. Because I think two teams mirror each other quite a bit tonight. Yeah, we, we have to stay focused. You know, it's been a distracting week for us not being oh, able, of course. Not of being course. able to practice. So of course. I think uh, hopefully we, we did a nice job with the kids coaching and, and, and taking them care of practice. So we just got to stay focused and do our jobs. Good luck to you. Okay. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. With Nick Homick and Glenn Muskowski, Steve Young with you on this Monday night edition of High School Football Week Number 4. Mid-Valley Spartans and the Western Wayne Wildcats here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. It's going to be a cold one uh, on the way over. The temperature was just around the 52 degree mark and uh, probably by the end of this ball game it might be down around 40. So uh, the wind has died down. Now it's picked back up just as I speak. So uh, it's good. the wind will be a factor if you want to throw the football here tonight. And you better cover the mums too, Steve, because the, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know, it's 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 it could play a big factor, and it is. It's this is wide open here, and the wind comes blowing across here. This field uh, pretty heavily at times, Nick. Right? Yeah, I can second that. Uh, <laughs> well, you you're the experienced is, man up on top, especially up here. They've had a. Uh, They've had their share of weather uh, events, I guess you could say. Yeah, folks, uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, Nick Homick, our cameraman, of course, wears the headset. He's the third man on our broadcast crew. He is in the elements, and you can hear the wind in his headset as we speak. And uh, he's the guy who bears all the weather elements, rain, wind, snow, you name it. Uh, we're inside the booth. We're sheltered from the wind. So uh, looks as though Western Wayne will be kicking off to the Mid-Valley Spartans. And now your starting lineup for today's ball game, brought to you by the Roselle Department Store in Carbondale, where the new line of fall and winter clothing is on display. Roselle Department Store has a great supply of school uniforms for Lakeland, Carbondale area, LaSalle Academy, Holy Cross, Forest City and Valley View. If you're planning a fall wedding, Roselle Department Store has everything you need for your big day with the hottest styles in formal wear by Sarno and Son and a perfect fit every time. Roselle and Carbondale now offers fast, reliable laundry and dry cleaning services.
And as we continue along with the Roselle Department Store starting lineups, you can depend on Roselle Department Store for unsurpassed quality, style, and value. Sam and the staff at Roselle in Carbondale are proud to present your starting lineups for today's game between the Mid-Valley Spartans and the Western Wayne Wildcats. Offensively for Mid-Valley at tight end, it's Dan Wood, a senior at 6'3 and 195. Mike LaRusso at split end, he is a 6'1", 175-pound senior. Joe Healy is at left tackle, a 5'11", 200. 110 pound senior. John Leskevich is at right tackle, a junior, 5'9 and 240. Matt Stenkevich is at left guard, a freshman, 5'9, 175. Jason Klein at the right guard, a freshman, 5'9 and 171. And R.J. Powell will line up at center for the Spartans. He's a sophomore, 5'9 and 235 pounds. Tyler J. will quarterback the Spartan offense. He is a 6 foot, 170 pound senior. Corey Tomasetti lines up at fullback, a senior, 6'1 and 230 pounds. Going into this weekend, he was leading Division Three in rushing. At tailback, Colin Munley, the sophomore, 5'8 and 145 pounds. At flanker, Zach Fiumi, he is a 5'9", 155-pound sophomore. And defensively, for the Western Wayne Wildcats, brought to you by the Roselle Department Store in Carbondale, it is J Jim Stein at left end, a junior at 6' and 225 pounds. Andrew Slajinski at right end, a 6'3", 235-pound senior. Justin Gisinger is at left tackle, a senior, 5'8 and 280. Jake Nagel at nose guard, he's a 5'11, 250 pound junior. Joe Boinko at safety, 5'11, 195 pounds and a senior. The weak side linebacker is Kyle Coons, a 6'175 pound senior. Brandon Toot at middle linebacker, 6'1, 200 pounds and a junior. Kyle Smith at left corner, a senior. Kyle Haynes at right corner, he's a senior. The strong safety, Steve Bluthall, a senior, and Scott walk is the free safety and it will be western wayne and matt lombardi to kick it off and here we go with monday night football on adams cable channel seven ball bouncing around and it will be fallen upon at the 32 yard line by an up back from mid valley and that's where the spartans will commence this drive first down and 10. well there's a squib kick uh, obviously western wayne did not want mid valley to get any kind of uh, a run back and for the Mid-Valley Spartans, they're coached by Dave Rebar in his second year. He had a career record at Mid-Valley of five wins and eight losses. They have scored 44 points this season while allowing 83. And from the 32-yard line, it is first down and 10 for Mid-Valley. And a low snap from center, and this will be Shea keeping the football, dancing around, and Shea is up across the 35, and then popped on the play by middle linebacker Brandon Toot, leading the way defensively for the Wildcats. Well, uh, Shea thought he was going to get around the left end there, cut back right to the right side, right into the middle of the pack of uh, the defenders of Western Wayne, picked up a, a tough three yards. Second down and seven for Mid-Valley as they go to work from their own 36-yard line. And Tyler Shea, the six-foot, 170-pound senior quarterback, will drop back, fires underneath the coverage, and the pass was in incomplete. Kyle Haynes had an opportunity to pick it off, a uh, little bit underthrown near the midfield stripe, and Mid-Valley will look down the barrel of third down and seven. Well, it really didn't wasn't seem like there was any receiver in that area. He threw it behind the, the, the split end coming across. Uh, uh, maybe it's tough to throw out there now. We don't know yet. Steve, we'll see. Well, Nick will definitely know which way the wind is going. <laughs> you know, like we said a little, little earlier on, it's really not as bad as it was in pregame warm-ups when it had to be over 20, 25 miles an hour. Shea will call out the signals, and he's back to throw. Looks, fires downfield, and it is caught at the 35-yard line. Really Looked nice. like really Dan nice Wood on the reception. Out, totally stretched right out, pulled it down, and uh, gives Mid Valley a first down deep in Wildcat territory. You know the Western Wayne defender really had nice coverage, just missed time to jump. It seems. Yeah, it was. It went up a little too soon. A 30-yard pickup on that. Mid Valley right runs a bit of an. Sorry, Steve. Go Mid ahead. Mid Valley runs a bit of an Oregon-style offense, in shotgun primarily in this first series here. A lot of uh, fakes to the fullback in the, in the backfield. And Mike LaRusso will be a wide out at the top of your screen as Tyler Shea will hand it off to the fullback. And that was Thomas Setti. 
Looked like the ball was loose. And Almost, Western yeah. Wayne has recovered. The Wildcats recover the loose football and uh, they dodge a bullet and they will take over possession of the football near their own 27 yard line. Huge break early in the game from Western Wayne. Yeah, sure is, was, as Mid Valley know, was moving the football almost at will. And uh, and that was a, a fumble by, uh, because of extra effort. This time, Western Wayne comes up to the line of scrimmage for their first series of the football game in a scoreless first quarter with 10.48 to play. And Scott Walk. Up under center and walk will go on a handoff and it will go to Courtney Harp around the right side across the 30. Harp up across the 35 yard line near the 36. Tackle on the play by defensive tackle John Leskevich, the big 5'9, 240 pound junior. So, right from the get go, the Wildcats look as though they want to try to establish the run. And they're in a short yardage situation, second and one from their own 36. Trips to this side. Previous play had a trips to the opposite side. Scott Walk will come near side and hand it off. Harp will take it across the 40. He's across midfield, and there he goes. One man to beat at the 10, and he spun down near the five yard line. Cody Petkavage made the touchdown saving tackle for Mid Valley. 54 yard run. But not before the big 54 yard explosive run. And the Wildcats are knocking on the door with 9.54 left here in the first. We're scoreless in Varden. Very similar play to what they ran on the first play of the game. Just like I said, trips to the one side, and they're just trying to stretch out the defense as best they can, and Harp is just finding a hole. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if that's the, uh, I don't know if that's a coach up on the booth. I could hear him yelling, yeah. call timeout or we're going to get a penalty. And the Wildcats do with 9.46 left here in the first quarter. We're scoreless in Barden on Adams Cable High School Football. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Well, I'll bet you uh, wish you had an Eden Pure heater tonight. <laughs> And if you're looking for one, stop by at the Waymart Building Center. See Chuck. Uh, they have Eden Pure heaters at the Waymart Building Center. And you know, you just uh, know that the cold mornings are going to be coming one right after the other. Wouldn't it be nice to get up in the morning and crank up that heat, Glenn? I have one. You do? <laughs> I do. And they work and they, well. They, they, they do. They, they really work, work well. well. And so, you can move them anywhere you want. There you go. The Wildcats take a timeout to talk things over as they are knocking on the door against the Mid-Valley Spartans with a first and goal from the Spartan five-yard line. And up to the line of scrimmage they come as sophomore quarterback Scott Walk will set them down. Walk will send a man in motion to the far side. That is Smith. Handoff will go to the Kyle Haynes, and Haynes will take it off left tackle for the five-yard touchdown, and the Wildcats draw first blood, leading by the score of six to nothing. So that's what Western Wayne needed, guys. They needed to get off to a quick start. And as uh, Don McDonough said in the pregame interview that uh, the Wildcats are frustrated losing a couple of close games and they're looking to put together a solid effort here tonight. Yeah, and they have to execute on all ends of the ball. I mean, you know, they're not lacking offense. They're just lacking closing out games. Matt Lombardi for the point after. Out of the hold of Kyle Haynes. And... This is a high spinning kick that is good. And the Wildcats have a 7-0 lead over the Mid-Valley Spartans as we go to a break here on Adams Cable High School Football. Tap a know -how. Tap a know -how. 
Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale. Your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. 9.42 remaining first quarter here in Varden at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. And the Western Wayne Wildcats lead the Mid-Valley Spartans by the score of 7 to nothing. Wildcats now will tee up the football and kick off to Mid-Valley. Guys, a very impressive drive by the Western Wayne Wildcats to take the early lead. Well, Steve, uh, a Courtney uh, Harp after two steps is at full speed and when he hit that line of scrimmage he was gone and there was he was they were lucky to have someone deep in that defensive backfield to catch up to him here's your kickoff by matt lombardi of the western wayne wildcats two are deep for the mid valley spartans and here's the kick they're going to squib it. It will bounce off and up back, and uh, the ball is loose. The it's Spartans still are still trying to get the handle on it, and we have to wait for the official word from the field. A lot of pointing going on, yep. but Mid-Valley Mid -Valley. Mid will have the football. So Mid-Valley dodges a bullet. Looked like uh, Mike LaRusso may have been the man uh, to fall on the football. He is their split end in the offensive set, so he has good hands, and uh, well, Mid-Valley having a lot of trouble handling the kickoffs. Well, you know, obviously that's what uh, that's what Western Wayne is, is going to try to do the, the, the remainder of the night to keep that ball bouncing and uh, let it be, get it free if they can. Tyler Shea. On a quick handoff to Tomasetti, and Tomasetti taking people with him and barrels across the 41-yard line for the Mid-Valley Spartans. Wow. And he will have a first down for Mid-Valley. All Tomasetti by himself. He is a bull. And you could see the Western Wayne Wildcats going after the football. Trying to get the hands in there and strip the football from Tomasetti. First down and 10. The Spartans from their own 41-yard line, as you could hear the wind on the top of the booth. And the handoff to Tomasetti. Tomasetti across the 45, out near the 48-yard line. Boy, Tomasetti is a, he really brings it when he comes across that line of scrimmage at six foot one and 230 pounds. They're, they're not gonna arm tackle him tonight. They're gonna have to hit him low and wrap him up. Second down and three. Nick, are you still with us? Still with you. I'm telling you, it's. I just think it's just windy up here because the winds, you know, like you said earlier in the broadcast, is just wide open up here. I don't feel it doesn't seem to be a. Yeah, the flag isn't factor. even moving at this point. Second and three from the 48 for Mid Valley. Shea will hand it off. Coming near side for Mid Valley is Colin Munley, and he's across midfield into Wildcat territory near the 49. Let's check where they're going to spot this football. It will probably come back a yard to the 49, and that's where the official will place the football. And will we have a measurement? No, the chain first gang down. will move. It's a first down. So the Spartans will sustain the drive with the first down as they trail 7-0 here with 8 minutes and 21 seconds left first quarter. Tyler Shea, senior quarterback, man in motion. Shea hands it off. Thomas Setti, Thomas Setti dragging players with him to the Wildcat 40-yard line. Uh, he is, as we said before, he is one tough cookie out there. Sure is. He's uh, six foot one. Gets that football, and uh, as Glenn mentioned, if you don't tackle him down around the, the legs and the ankles, you're not going to. You're going to have trouble stopping him, and he is really picking up huge portions of real estate when he gets the football. Second and one for the Spartans. Tomasetti, the lone setback. And this will be a busted play yeah. as uh, Shea goes down, faked the handoff to Munley, but lost his footing on the turf. And they'll, Spartans will lose yardage on this play to the 46-yard line. Loss of five yards. I think he just stumbled. Uh, yeah, got his uh, spikes 
yeah, caught that, in the turf. And that's not so, so out of the ordinary. And Mid Valley will look to the far sideline to Dave Rebar for the offensive instructions on third down and six from the Wildcat 46 as we near seven minutes to play first quarter. And coming to the near side. Trips to the near side as uh, Shea will drop back in the pocket. Shea fires the pass downfield and it looked like Munley on the reception. And that's uh, good for another Mid Valley first down at the 34 yard line of Western Wayne. Good 12 yard pickup and another first down. So right now, Mid Valley on the move, trailing by the score of six to nothing. Here they come to the line of scrimmage as Tyler Shea will call out the signals. Shea on a quick hitter. This is Tomasetti breaks a couple of tackles and look at him go like a pinball out there bouncing around and then is finally dropped at the 33 uh, yard line. That was just good assignment play by Western Wayne's defense. Got their ends kept their containment they were supposed to do. Forced them back inside, and their linebackers finished the job for a minimal game. That, that he, again, is an impressive runner. Quick moving first quarter of football here in Varden. 7 nothing Wildcats. Second and seven for Mid-Valley. As they come to the line of scrimmage, Mike LaRusso, number 19, will be a wideout at the top of your screen. And Shea will go and a handoff. Thomas Setti off left tackle. Plows to the 25-yard line for a good gain on the play. So third down and short yardage now for the Mid-Valley offense. So you talk about some uh, tough losses for both ball clubs. Last week it was... Uh, Mid-Valley losing to Honesdale by the score of 20 to 14. And on opening night, they lost to Valley View by the score of 27 to 12. A couple of tough, tough losses for Mid-Valley. Third down in a yard from the 25 for the Spartans. Shea handing off Tomasetti, wrapped up, breaks a tackle. He's got the first down and Western Wayne hitting him way too high. Absolutely. Running him out of bounds was uh, Joe Boinko, the uh, safety, strong side uh, linebacker, and uh, he just hit him up around the numbers, and you just can't yep. do that with Tomasetti. You're not going to stop him like that. Yeah, if it, it was, is in the backfield for a two-yard loss and, and, and made, made a 13-yard gain out of it. And right now with the football <laughs> resting on the 13-yard line, first down and 10 for the Mid-Valley Spartans, but we do have a timeout on the field, so we will keep it right here. And uh, remind you, we have more high school football coming up for you Friday night from the Andrew J. Sarah Sports Complex in Carbondale when the Chargers will host the Dunmore Bucks, and we'll have all of the action for you coming up this Friday night, 645, right here on Adams Cable Channel 7. Well, guys, cool night, but uh, the remainder of the week and the weekend is going to be like, uh, like, like nice, we're back nice in summer. summer days. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it, it's funny the way this, this weather is acting. It's, uh, I, I don't mind it, though. Believe me. I'll it's take it. it, it, it the sun could be out forever. Because you know when it comes, it comes. <laughs> Old man winter's right around the corner. <laughs> So guys, who gets the call right here? You've got a lot of options as uh, you're in a good situation. First down and 10 on the Wildcat 13 yard line. And Thomas Setti has been a one man wrecking crew for Mid Valley thus far. Well, Steve, they haven't stopped him yet. Yeah, I, if I, if I uh, coach Rebar, he gets the ball until they do stop him. And Mid Valley now will go to work as Shea will work out of the gun. Tomasetti in the backfield with him. And there's a quick hitter to Tomasetti, and Tomasetti barrels right up the gut of the Wildcat defense, takes the football to the Cat 7-yard line. 
So Western Wayne right now with a 7-0 lead, but defensively having a lot of trouble stopping the running attack of Mid-Valley. Uh, you know, and it's, it seems to be all Thomas Eddy, but that line is not, not such a small line for Mid-Valley, too. They're, no, they're, they're doing, doing a good job, job yep. also, opening up some uh, room for him to run. And out of the huddle they come on second and four from the seven. Seven-nothing, Wildcats lead it. And Mid-Valley giving it to Tomasetti. Tomasetti plows up the gut of the Wildcat defense, and he is stopped inside the five near the Wildcat two. But should have enough for a first down, and he does. Well, now you can just continue to pound the football right up the gut or off tackle if you want to, because uh, right now the Wildcats don't have an answer for uh, Corey Tomasetti. And yep. the play is sent in from the far sideline. Zach Fiumi, the sophomore wearing number seven, checks in with the play from head coach Dave Rebar. 3.55 time remaining. First quarter, 7-0 Wildcats. Spartans threatening with a first down and goal from the Wildcat two. Shea up under center. Shea will give it to Tomasetti, this time bottled up for no gain right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, that was a good team tackle on Tomasetti that time. Well, Nick, you ran it up the middle once. Do you go to Tomasetti again or uh, give them give the Wildcat defense a different look? Well, you see Mid-Valley's not afraid to throw the ball and they've had some success so far with it. So, you know, they have a lot of options right now. Well, they, they, they faked that hand off to Tomasetti. I, I think the quarterback could probably walk into the end zone. Because everybody on the Wildcat defense seems to be keying on Tomasetti as Shea will set them down from the two. Shea with a long count, and he'll hand it off to Tomasetti, and he's got the two-yard touchdown. And the Spartans now trail the Wildcats by one, seven to six, with 2.55 left here in the first. So Mid Valley continues to pound the football, and uh, they could tie it up with a successful PAT right here. Noah Mills, who uh, just got on the, fo on the uh, football team from the soccer team, will, point, will try for the point after out of the hold of Mike LaRusso. And a perfect snap, and this is blocked. So the Wildcats come up big, and with 2.55 left in the first, Western Wayne leads it 7-6 to six here on Adams Cable High School Football. The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. Here's the kickoff by the Mid-Valley Spartans as they trail by the score of 7-6. to six. Low squib kick bouncing around. It's loose. Up for grabs. Caught by the Wildcats at the 38. And uh, Western Wayne will have it. And uh, coming up with that uh, football was Brandon Toot for the Western Wayne Wildcats on the coverage. And uh, Western Wayne with a one-point lead with 2.52 left in the first will go to work offensively from their own 39-yard line. First down and 10. I don't know if guys, if they, they, both teams have seen something in their scouting that they feel they need to squib these kicks. But they're, huh? they're borderline onside kicks. Yeah, they really they are. Yep. Really, something, they, they definitely saw something or they wouldn't be going with it. So uh, right now, it is Western Wayne back on the offensive attack. 
And they'll go to the ground game with Courtney Harp. And Harp plows across the 45-yard line and takes the football to the Wildcat 49 for a gain of nine yards. But Courtney, Courtney Harp really accelerates when he gets that football and takes it across the line of scrimmage in the blink of an eye. And right now, Wildcats look down the barrel of second down and a yard to go as they hold a one-point advantage over Mid-Valley. Right now, Scott Walk will set them down, and uh, Scott Walk will go to a pass on the far side to Kyle Haynes. Good for a Wildcat first down as he takes the football into Spartan territory, finally tackled at the 41-yard line. Just a simple pitch and catch out there to Haynes. Get him the ball in open space, and just, he makes the most of it. You know, they do that a little bit, uh, and that might uh, just uh, free uh, Courtney uh, Harp to run, just run a little bit easier, Nick. Yeah, and, and you know, you going into a little bit of a headwind here, it's, it's a good safe pass to throw right now. And the official spot of the football is at the Spartan 43. Handoff will go to Harp, coming to the near side. Hemmed in, breaks a tackle, turns it upfield. Second effort will take him inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Boy, I was impressed with that run, guys, as it looked as though Courtney Harp was caught near the 44-yard line, but uh, danced around. Second effort. Gave him another, an additional five yards on the play. Well, you know, the difference between him and Tomazetti, you have to find him to catch him. You, fi you find Tomazetti, now you have a hard time bringing him Now down. you have to just <laughs> tackle him. <laughs> yeah, two different styles of running, but very effective on both ends. Second down and four, Western Wayne from the Spartan 37-yard line with the Cats leading seven to six, buck 30 on the clock here in the first. Harp gets the call. Harp with running room. Nice move. Stiff arms a player and then is dropped near the 23-yard line of the Spartans. Yeah, Harp just gets on the second level. He's got an extra gear. Thomas said he's just, you know, he yeah. gets into the second level. He's just looking for somebody to run over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So with one, 119 left, we'll keep it right here for the timeout. Well, you know, and, and he'll wait for you, too. Yeah, he's not afraid. He's not going to shy away from the competition, believe me. No, he, uh, I think and he enjoys it. If I was that it. big either, I probably wouldn't either. Yeah, well, if I was that big, I'd probably be out there enjoying yeah. banging bodies around. Well, hey, it yeah. takes its all just on a defense the same. Why should they get all the fun addition <laughs> on the punch? These running backs, they love getting the second, second area and lower that shoulder. Especially when you uh, actually, uh, you know, the, the style of running that uh, Thomas said he has is a bit intimidating when yeah. he takes that football. He's coming at you, and you know it's coming, but you can't stop him. Right. That's it's the difficult part. It's like part. the Jimmy Brown of the new era. Yeah. <laughs> if some of you people remember Jimmy Brown. Yeah. Didn't see Jim Brown run out of bounds too often. No. The only time he was running out of bounds was for halftime, I think. <laughs> First down and 10 when play resumes for the Wildcats from the Spartan 22 as they lead 7-6 to six with 119 to play first quarter. Nice crowd on hand for a Monday night. We're almost at capacity here in Varden. Well, they yeah. love their football here at Western Wayne. Well, they do, and, uh, and, and Mid-Valley for years has always had a decent following in football and certainly in the last couple of years in basketball, for, for sure. As the Wildcats break the huddle, it will be Scott Walk to come up under center. Kyle Haynes, uh, the lone setback, and he will take the handoff coming near side. Tries to turn the corner and then was strung out on the play. Good job defensively by the Mid Valley Spartan Zach Fiumi to lead the way with the pursuit. Yeah. Mid Valley really made a nice adjustment defensively in this, in this series uh, when they've seen them come out in that trips formation. You know, really, they're just stringing it out, stringing it out, whereas in the first series, it only took them two carries to go to length of the field. It's all about adjustments. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats as we have 41 seconds to play here in the first. And this time, there'll be some uh, players moving around. Some adjustments being made in the offensive set. On the second down play, and it is Kyle Haynes taking the football off left tackle, lowers the shoulder and hammers inside the 20 to the about the 18-yard line. Should do it for the first quarter. Yeah, clock now winding down. 
final nine seconds, and that will bring an end to quarter number one here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden on Monday Night High School Football. It is Western Wayne 7, Mid Valley 6. We'll be back after this timeout on Channel 7 Sports. When your car does this. <laughs> Call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. Now back to more action with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Adams Cable High School Football. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Varden, along with Glenn Muskowski and Nick Holmick. Steve Young with you as we kick off quarter number two as the Wildcats hold a one-point lead over the Spartans by the score of 7-6. to six. So pretty good football game cooking here on this Monday night. But a Lackawanna Conference is uh, rivaling the NFL here, Steve. Yeah, really. Thursday night football, Monday night <laughs> football. Yeah, what else can we have? Well, I tell you, it's it's interesting and enjoyable. It really is. Some some Monday night football like this. This is this is really good. Third down and six for the Wildcats. Here's a pass batted away by the Mid Valley Spartans. Tom Egnatovich, the outside linebacker, came up, got a hand up, and batted the pass away from Scott Walk, and it will result in fourth and six for the Wildcats. Football on the 19-yard line as uh, Western Wayne will look to their head coach, Donnie McDonough Jr., in his second season. Sending in the play. So Don McDonough, deep in Spartan territory, will go for it from the Mid-Valley 19-yard line. Walk out of the shotgun, and he will take the snap. Time to throw, dancing around under the gun. Fires downfield, looks, and it's incomplete. His intended receiver was Brandon Tooth, the tight end, but he overthrows him. The heat was on, and Western Wayne turns over the football on Don's mid-valley. Will take over possession of the football at its own 19, first down and 10. It's a pretty good defense right there by mid-valley, and they will take over offensively. All right. Now uh, Western Wayne has to find a way to gather their team on uh, Mr. Tomasetti. And Tomasetti will line up in the backfield. And the handoff, well, they'll keep it. Shea will fire downfield. Good, looking good for Danny Wood. Play. Incomplete. Great defense okay. in the secondary. Kyle, Haynes. Kyle Smith and company. Kyle Haynes. Good job in the secondary to break it up. And Dan Wood is a good target at six foot three. Ran a good pattern, but uh, just could not hang on to the football. Second and ten. The wind has really picked back up, you guys. Uh, yeah, you know, taking Valley is going into it a little bit of a, you know, more of the headwind than they were in the first quarter, of course. Mike Larusso is a wide out at the bottom of your screen. And the handoff will go to Tomasetti, but this time the Wildcats stop him cold at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Wildcats right there to uh, stop Tomasetti. Well, they're going to have to gang tackle him, as we all know, Steve, in order for them, for them to stop him. Andrew Slajinski led the way with the pursuit for the Wildcats. Third down and nine, football resting at the Spartan 20 as they trail seven to six against the Wildcats with one minute gone by here in the second quarter. And it will be Shea to call out the signals out of the gun. Shea with time, fires downfield on the run. No, LaRusso almost had it. Well, just, just thrown got a little bit uh, behind him. Yeah, thrown behind him, 
Got it. Got a little bit out of sync trying to make the catch near midfield. It turned around. It, you know, the quarterback was on the run. That's a little bit more difficult to make that pass. And the punting unit will come on to the football field for the Spartans of Mid Valley. And two will be deep for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Nick, catch the ball. Catch the ball. Well, it's for sure, it, it should be a good field position. Well, maybe not that one. case, get away from it now. Now that's a punt that's bouncing around, and it's going to get a Western Wayne bounce. A very, very short kick. Does that even get positive yardage? <laughs> so the Western Wayne Wildcats with a gift right here as they will get the football inside the 25 at the 24-yard line of the Spartans. You know, keep that in mind, guys. If that, if you see another punt like that or two later in the game, I wouldn't be surprised if the team started gambling on fourth down. Well, sure. Absolutely. First down and 10 for the Western Wayne Wildcats. As they come to the line of scrimmage, sophomore quarterback Scott Walk under center. And Walk, two-step drop, fires, passes incomplete, intended for Brandon Tooth, the tight end. Out in the flat. That will bring up second down for the Wildcats. Well, it's, it seems to me that uh, the passing game is going to be a little bit more difficult, Nick, as you predicted up there. With that wind, uh, every, every pass seems to be thrown a little bit behind. A little bit of the timing is off. Yeah, it's difficult when you have, you know, the wind at your back for one quarter because it's still, I mean, even though the wind's at your back, yeah, but that only helps on deep throws, I, I feel. Second and 10 for the Wildcats. Handoff will go to Harp. Harp across the 20 Needs with running room. There he goes down near the five, and Harp will take it into the end zone for a 24-yard touchdown. Really great block out here. You call the Glenn on the receiver. Right. Harp just accelerates when he gets the football. Very exciting runner to watch, and the Wildcats lead the Spartans 13-6. So that uh, that short punt really hurt Mid Valley, and the Sp and the uh, Wildcats capitalized. And Matt Lombardi will try for the point after out of the hold of Kyle Haynes. And the high snap, and the click is blocked. Uh. High, high snap, everything is off, uh, timing's off, and i uh, tell you what, the penetration by that end for uh, Mid-Valley was, he was uh, wide open coming into the block that kick. And with 10.34 left here in the first half, it is Western Wayne leading Mid-Valley 13-6 on Adams Cable High School Football. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield, online at NJSGO.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Ten thirty-four left in the first half, and the Western Wayne Wildcats lead the Mid Valley Spartans by the score of thirteen to six. And now it will be Western Wayne teeing up the football, and they will kick off to the Mid Valley Spartans. It will be Matt Lombardi kicking off for Western Wayne, and we'll see if he'll boot it away. No, it's going to be another squib kick bouncing around and <laughs> caught there by James Urso of the Mid Valley Spartans at the twenty-eight yard line, and that's where the Mid Valley Spartans will commence this drive with the football first down and 10. I think Urso prematurely hit the deck on that time. He had an opportunity to run that ball back a little bit. It certainly looked that way, but again, I, I, there's, they have to see something in there. They fear their, their return game a lot, but when you have your back at the wind there, I would boot that as much as you can. Because mm -hmm. you're really, you're realistically giving really good field position here. 
First down and 10, Mid-Valley from its own 28-yard line. Shea will send a man in motion, and they give the football to Thomas Setti, and his forward progress takes him to the 30-yard line for a two-yard gain on the play. So power football coming at you right up the gut, Corey Tomasetti. Well, the whole Western Wayne defense knows where Mr. Tomasetti is now. <laughs> Definitely. They're co he's coming right at you. He can really haul the mail. And on second down and eight, with just under 10 minutes remaining in the half. Really, the Western Wayne defense has made a nice adjustment to contain him just a bit. And it will be uh, Tomasetti checking out of the lineup right now, going to the far sideline. And it will be Shea to come up to the line of scrimmage on the second down play. And the handoff will go to the uh, first man through the line. Cody Petkavage getting the call. He is a 5'10", 170-pound junior. And Petkavage carried the football out to about the 31 or 32 yard line. And now uh, it will be Tomasetti checking back in. So uh, Petkavage came into the ball game possibly to give Tomasetti a little break. And Mid Valley will look down the barrel of third down and seven. Zach Fiumi is a wide out at the top of your screen. Dan Wood will come near side. Shea out of the gun. And Shea, with time, fires underneath the coverage, incomplete. Intended for Mike LaRusso at the 44. And good coverage in the secondary by the Wildcat defense. And the punting team will come on for Mid-Valley, guys, and this is where they've had some trouble tonight. Well, let's see what happens here. Like I said, if, it, if this is another poor punt, I wouldn't be surprised if Mid-Valley tried another... Well, Noah Mills, the 5'8", 150-pound senior, just came on to the football team from the soccer team. So we'll see how he does punting here. This time it's a lot better. Lots of hang time on this baby. And it will be Western Wayne and Kyle Haynes taking the football at the 35, the 30, and then tiptoes along the near sideline and is run out of bounds. He's actually out at the 19-yard line. A nice run, a nice wall formed on the right side of, uh, of the Western Wayne return team. Did a great job, and I'll tell you, Haynes showed some speed there, didn't he? He sure did. Guys, is Western Wayne a little bit more aggressive in this football game tonight? Oh, well, I, I, I think they I, I think they're so angry over the fact that they can they should be three could be three and zero that they just want to prove that they're a better team that they show. They seem to be much more aggressive here tonight in this game. I think they seem a lot fresher. I don't know. Just the extra couple days off maybe helped. Maybe it did as Scott Walk will hand it off to Harp. Harp with a big hole. Nice job by the left side of the Wildcat line. And the tackle on the play made by Justin Klein, the left inside linebacker for the Spartan defense. Yeah, they're definitely fresh. But uh, Don McDonough did say uh, most of the practices that were being held were in the gymnasium, so he had to get the team out of the gym and actually paid for the bus trip to practice over in uh, Carbondale at the Andrew J. Sarah Sports Complex. Second down and three from the 12. Here's Harp once again taking the handoff, runs into a lot of his own players and will take it into the end zone for a 12-yard touchdown. Courtney Harp the tailback with the touchdown and the Wildcats have a 19-6 lead over Mid-Valley. Well, guys, right now the Wildcat offense is running on all cylinders, looking good. And we'll see if the Wildcats will uh, try for two or go for the point after. They're going to attempt the two. They're going for well, two. I would think so because of the block. You, you, if you make the two, all of a sudden you're back to even. And the Wildcats will go for the two-point conversion as Scott Walk will set them down and he will hand it off to Harp and Harp will follow his blockers for the two-point conversion. 7.52 left here in the first half and the Wildcats lead the Spartans 21-6 on Adams Cable High School Football. 
Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Homes, located at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale, offer all types of funeral services. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service. From Lawrence A. Gabriel Jr., family, and staff, good luck this season to our local athletes and teams. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Barden. Nick Homick, Glenn Muskowski, Steve Young, Monday night high school football. And the Wildcats are out to a 21-6 lead over the Mid-Valley Spartans. Wildcats will tee it up and kick off to Mid-Valley. And uh, wind a little bit kicking up once again here at the Barden Garden. Steve, well, we spoke to uh, Coach Don McDonough. He was worried before the game that did he do a good, the squad staff do a good enough job to get the team ready with the, with the, the uh, disruption of the schedule. Looks to me like he, they did an excellent job. Yes, they did, as uh, Matt Lombardi will kick off for the Wildcats. And once again, short spinning kick. Zach Fiumi fields it across the 35, caught near the 39-yard line. Yeah, they'll mark it, I right think, the, a little bit closer right to the 40. 40. And uh, Mid-Valley will go to work right now on the short end of a 21-6 score with 7.48 left here in the first half. They are, uh, Nick, a uh, prime example of uh, good field position when you do that. Well, they're getting better field position every, every mm -hmm. time they feel the mm -hmm. kick now. You know, now at this point, they're up to the 40. Let's see if they can capitalize, though. First down and 10, Mid-Valley from its own 40. And the handoff to Colin Munley. And Munley goes around the right side, lowers his shoulder for about a gain of a yard on the play. You know, they've been doing their passing game a lot as they've been slipping uh, Thomas Setti out uh, flat, almost setting up some screens. I'd like to see if they pull one of those out soon. Well, he gets the ball out in the flat. Uh, they, he's going to have some uh, some uh, wide open areas. He gets the ball in the flat with the head of steam. Look out. Yeah, that will be interesting to see uh, who is going to come up to make the tackle. On second down and eight. Near side, it's Mike LaRusso. And this time, Shea with a flag down on the play. Was first? rolling out to the near side, and that's it's been a very well played game thus far. Is that our first yellow hanky? It, 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 yes, is. it is. I hope this will last for a while. Uh, <laughs> Nick did not expect this. Uh, well, no, I did not. Nick, Nick, Nick doesn't like uh, yellow, yellow flags. Yellow is not a good color. Offside, Western Wing. That will be a five yarder. I really didn't see it. Did somebody come across on the interior? I think they might have been lined up. I don't know. It, I, I didn't see anybody move. They may have been lined. Well, if they were lined up uh, offside, they would have blown the flag earlier, would they? Or did they give? Did they allow the play to go? No, they blew it dead. I don't think it's like the NFL where you get a free play if somebody yeah. come, jumps across. Second and three from the 47 for Mid Valley. Again, As Tyler Shea, now, now there was moving on the line. Yep. Two flags on this play. See, I spoke too soon. See, you, you know, I was thinking that in the first quarter, late in the first quarter thus far, you know, well-played game. And this time the uh, five-yard penalty will be assessed against the Mid-Valley Spartans. Yeah, uh, against no, the Western Wayne Wildcats, see, these I should no, say. These are no brainer penalties, though. Yeah. This isn't the official spot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, movement on the line. That will give Mid-Valley an automatic uh, first down in Wildcat territory at the 48-yard line. 21-6, to six, if you're just tuning in, it's uh, Wildcats over the Spartans. 7.05 left in the first half. Tyler Shea of Mid-Valley under center. And Shea will go on a handoff. And there's Tomasetti dragging players with him. Defenders all over the place. And uh, well, well, he took, uh, looked like Matt Witt, the left tackle of... Uh, the Western Wayne defense, he's six foot two and two fifty, dragged him along for the ride. Well, he he got a head, full head of steam that time. He hit the hit that hole prior to getting hit by the defensive line. And that's gonna only be disaster for Western Wayne if they continue to do that. Second and two for the Spartans as they break huddle. 
from the Wildcat 40. And it is Shea taking the snap. This time he'll roll back. Fires downfield. Got a man open. Fiumi has it. Nice move by Fiumi. Spun down near the 10-yard line of Western Wayne. Zach Fiumi, 5'9", 165, and a sophomore. Good move on the far side of the field, and right now the Spartans are in excellent shape with the football spotted at the Wildcat 10. And guys, that's not fog that you're seeing go moving across the field. That's the barbecue grill <laughs> down at the concession stand. They actually have the charcoal going and uh, it's a good cooking. Place to be tonight. It is. <laughs> it's a perfect place to be. First down and goal from the 10. It's time they go with the running attack. And Tomasetti takes it around the right side, inside the uh, six to the five yard line. I'm surprised they can keep that uh, grill lit here tonight. I saw a lot of flames coming from that. <laughs> and if we had Anthony here, oh, he would, he, he'd be down and he'd tell you all about guys, those he's, flames. He is devastated. He can't <laughs> wait to get back up here for the next game. And I believe he's going to be our producer on the uh, Lakeland Dunmore game. Second down and goal from the five yard line for Mid Valley as Shea will hand it off. And that was Tomasetti. And of a tough one yard. Tried to take it uh, up the gut, and uh, Wildcat defense stuffed him right there. Third down and goal from the three for Mid Valley. So the fans all bundled up here tonight in hoodies and blankets and you name it, they have it. The soup is going, hot chocolate. Typical football night here in Varden. Perfect night for a football game. Wildcats with a 21 to six lead trying to deny Mid Valley the end zone right here. As Tyler Shea will survey the defense. Shea will roll to the near side. In some trouble, eludes a tackler, fires in the end zone. Incomplete. Boy, he was elusive that time. Looked like Danny Wood was the intended receiver in the end zone. Did well, a good job to elude a couple of tacklers. There was great penetration on by the de defensive uh, team of uh, uh, Western Wayne that time. He had to reverse his, uh, his field and try, and try to block it just to get that pass away. Now we have a player uh, shaken up for the Mid-Valley Spartans being attended to with four minutes and 28 seconds left here in the first half of today's game and uh, Spartans trailing 21 to six. And we will go to a quick timeout and return with more football action here in Varden on Adams Cable High School Football. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an 895 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Injury time out here in Barton. Tyler Shea shaken up. He went to the far sideline, got up, seemed to be okay. We'll see if he could return to uh, more action. And it's fourth down. And goal from the three-yard line for the Mid-Valley Spartans as play will resume. Now well, Nick sounds pretty rough up there. With yeah, that it does gust it time to time. <laughs> so right now it will be... Boy, are they spread out in this Yes, formation. they are. They are really spread out and they... Lone setback, the man will take it. Oh, he what a was hit. belted on the play. That was Colin Munley in the backfield, and he took a wicked hit inside the five-yard line. Drilled on the play, and Western Wayne will take over possession of the football. Brandon took That's a huge stand. Great, there, great stick on that, because that, he was in the end zone. So the Wildcat defense rises to the occasion as they deny the Spartans the end zone. 
And Western Wayne leading 21 to 6 now will take over possession of the football at its own two yard line, first down and 10. So, right here, uh, you might need a dose of Courtney Harp to get you uh, some breathing room. Well, I don't think they're going to get a dose of Courtney Harp because he's on the sideline over here. <laughs> okay, well, he's out of the ball game, so that... well, this would be interesting. So wow. Wind really kicking up, so let's see who will get the call right here. They will give it to Kyle Haynes, and this time Haynes will take the football across the five-yard line, and uh, that gives Western Wayne a little bit more working room. And, uh, yeah, Harp is on the near sideline. He was dancing around, seems to be okay, maybe just getting a little bit of a break. Second down and five for Western Wayne with under four minutes left in the first half as uh, Scott Walk will trot in with the play from head coach Donnie McDonough. As they break the huddle, and Scott Walk, the sophomore quarterback with an eye formation in the backfield, and Walk will hand it off, and this will be Haynes, I believe, going along the far side, heading for that first down, down marker. And the six foot two, 195 pound senior will first give down. the Wildcats a first down. Now Courtney Harp will check into the Wildcat lineup. So Don McDonough really has a lot of different options, different ways he can go in the backfield. Harp could be in there, Bluthall at tailback. He'll put Hines in the backfield in the mix. From the 14 yard line, first down and 10, the Cats on the move. As Scott Walk will have an eye formation in the backfield. And Walk looking oh, near side. Open. He has Haynes open, and Haynes has the catch at the 42. Huge play by the Western Wayne Wildcats, and uh, they will keep this drive going with a first down at the 43-yard line. 28-yard pickup, another first down, and the clock keeps moving. Wildcats putting it all together here tonight offensively. As Walk will have Bluthall dotting the I formation on first down and 10. 2.45 on the clock here in the first half. And there is Courtney Harp, and Harp zigzags his way across the 45. And Harp is caught at that point. Plenty of time right now if you're the Wildcats, two and a half minutes left in the half. Second down and six as they lead 21 to six over Mid Valley. Scott Walk looking near side. Haynes has it and draws a crowd coming up to make the tackle for the Mid Valley Spartans leading the way. Cody Petcavage, number 14. And also it was Tyler or Zach Fiumi, I should say, in on the tackle for Mid Valley. And with under two minutes left, it is third down and four for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Harp stopped just over midfield. Good job by the Spartan defense to shut him down. And actually his forward progress is marked right at midfield with 143 left. And the Wildcats wow. call a timeout to talk it over. Western Wayne calls, wow, oh, are we looking for something crazy here? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Don McDonough has his offense clicking here tonight, so on fourth and, and a couple, leading 21-6. to six. You have a little bit of uh, room to gamble here, Glenn. Well, but do you gamble? Do, do you... Do you let, if you don't make it, do you give them a half a field or do you kick it towards the sideline, maybe around the 20 and make them go 80 yards? Okay, Nick, you're the coach. <laughs> what do you do? I'd punt it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even hesitate. I, I, I didn't I even would. think he would either. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. You know, it, it, it's a long two yards. I'd even call it three. Yeah. You know, you got the wind at your back. I'd punt it. You get Mid a Valley. punt up in that jet stream, and you could pin Mid Valley deep in its own territory. And I don't know if Mid Valley's quarterback is, you know, what's his status right now. Right. That's another good you point. Know, so yeah. Will he even be in on the next uh, series? 
One minute, 43 seconds to play. First half here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden. 21 to 6, the Cats lead it. They face fourth down and two from midfield. Here they come to the line of scrimmage as Scott Walk. Try to run, uh, draw them off. Walk up under center with a long count. And it is Courtney Harp lowering the shoulder. I don't think he got it. He's going to be short. According to the official, he'll be short. It's all about the spot. No, he doesn't have that. He's short by a yard. yard, at least a yard. Mid-Valley takes over possession of the football with one minute and 36 seconds to play in the first half. So the gamble did not pay off for the Wildcats and head coach Donnie McDonough. Right now, the defense will have to uh, come up big. With the football at the Spartan 49-yard line, Tyler Shea checking back into the lineup now, a quarterback for the Mid-Valley Spartans as they will come to the line of scrimmage on first down and 10. Dan Wood will line up at tight end near side. Zach Fiumi, a wide out at the bottom of your screen. And Shea out of the gun, back to throw, rushes on, eludes the tackler, turns it upfield, across midfield. He's got the first down and much more. Good blocking, Shea still on his feet. Shea at the 20 and is dropped near the 15-yard line. Flag down here at the 45. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. But who's it on? Well, the officials having a conference at the uh, Wildcat 35. And let's wait for the call. That, that hurts. That's wow. usually the call. Right. When you get a busted play, it's usually well, the call. What an individual effort by Shea that, that was time. Fantastic. All for not. Unbelievable. Great athletic ability that time. Very exciting run, but it's uh, going to come back. And with 122 to play in the first half, the, wild, uh, the Wildcat defense will have to... Uh, Tighten things up right here, and for uh, Mid Valley, they'll go back to the drawing board, but this time facing uh, first down and uh, about 15 yards to go. That was uh, that's a tough one. You know, that put them right there where they had plenty of time. Well, they still have plenty of time, but they have to they have to pick up the pace now. And the clock. Running with 110 to play. First half, and senior quarterback Tyler Shea calls out the signals. Tomasetti in the backfield with him. He'll be a receiver, and they look to Tomasetti at the 45, and Tomasetti has a first down at the 39 yard line. That'll stop the clock until they set the chains up. So a good call by head coach Dave Rebar and the Mid-Valley Spartans, but they will be in a hurry-up offense right here on first down and 10 from the Wildcat 39. As Tyler Shea takes the good snap out of the shotgun, rolling near, far side. The pass is complete to Colin Munley, and Munley will go out of bounds to stop the clock with 41 seconds left. And another first down for the Mid-Valley Spartans. So Mid-Valley with a chance right here and time on the clock. They trail 21 to six. Well, Steve, they're, they're, they're really opening it up a little bit now and the, uh, Western Wayne has got to buckle down. Shea will put it up for grabs. Danny Wood, the intended receiver in double coverage incomplete. Wildcats uh, doing a good job covering him. And on the coverage was right corner Kyle Haynes, and also back there was Courtney Harp for the uh, Western Wayne Wildcats a defensively. A distinct height advantage for Wood if, if he can get if he can lob that ball up and go up and get it. Second and ten for the Spartans from the Wildcat 21-yard line as they come to the line of scrimmage. This time Kyle Munley and Danny Wood will be on the near side. Along with Fiumi, trips to the near side. And uh, Shea will go with a long count. Shea looks to the opposite side. And it's LaRusso. Great, great catch. 
inside the five-yard line. Mike LaRusso, the senior split end, good hands on that play to haul in the reception. And right now, Mid-Valley knocking on the door, trailing 21 to six. And you talk about a momentum builder going into the locker room at halftime, if you could take this into the end zone. 32 seconds to play in the half. And here is Mid-Valley coming to the line of scrimmage on first down and goal from the two-yard line of Western Wayne. Shea on a quarterback keeper. Trying to uh, fight for a yard or two. And I don't think he gained, a, a, gained and, anything. And the officials are uh, taking a close look at it, but with 21 seconds left, Mid-Valley will call a timeout. And uh, we'll keep it right here and thank all of our great sponsors for making high school football possible here tonight on this Monday night. Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, locally owned and trusted since 1929. A big thanks to Tom, Ronnie, and the great staff at Tom's Floor Shop, Main Street Childs. Now is the time to uh, take a look at the flooring in your car, in your home and uh, have it up graded for the upcoming holiday season. Big thanks to Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Guy has been really busy uh, paving, seal coating, all kind of demolition, construction work, you name it, he's been doing it all year. By your one-stop lumber and hardware center, the Waymart Building Center, home of the Eden Pure Heaters. Folks, uh, we're going to have some nice warm temperatures in the upcoming week, and you'll probably forget about how cold it is tonight and tomorrow morning. But uh, a couple of weeks from now, when we're doing the Lakeland game and Western Wayne, you're going to need that Eden Pure heater. So give Chuck a call. Buy your Napa Auto Parts store, Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale. Glenn Garth and the great staff. Uh, Proud sponsor of high school football, the Wrights Crossing Sports Shop, Main Street Snoco, Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center, NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield, and Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Homes. Second and goal from the one for Mid Valley. Shea out of the shotgun, back to throw, looking end zone, touchdown. It is Thomas Setti on the reception, and the Mid Valley Spartans now trail. Western Wayne 21 to 12 with 16 seconds to, seconds to play in the first half. Well, you know, you you would you would think uh, being that close that they would line up Tomasetti in the backfield and just pound the ball, but obviously Coach Rebar had some other 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 way of scoring, and of course, but he but who is the man that caught the pass? All everything. The go-to guy, and now they will attempt the two-point conversion. And uh, Tomasetti is going to line up as a receiver on the far side of the field as uh, Tyler Shea will take the snap and fire a bullet into the end zone, and it is intercepted. Intercepted by Steve Bluthall of Western Wayne. And with 16 seconds left to play in the first half, your score, Western Wayne 21 and Mid-Valley 12 here on Adams Cable High School Football. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Now back to more action with Nick Glenn and Steve on Adams Cable High School Football. Mid-Valley Spartans come back and they answer Western Wayne and they trail by, uh, 21, by the score of 21 to 12 with 16.6 seconds left here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Varden on this Monday night. Great to have you with us here on Adams Cable High School Football. And the Mid-Valley Spartans now will be kicking off to the Western Wayne Wildcats. Probably uh, into the wind right now, a swirling wind here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. James Urso will kick it off for Mid-Valley. And it is uh, Courtney Harp awaiting the kick at his own 10-yard line. That's if it goes that far. If he gets it, Mid-Valley has been squibbing some kicks. And there it is, a little sidewinder. It's up and loose and uh, caught there at the 44-yard line by an up-back from Western Wayne. 
I just don't understand it. I don't know. That's why I'm sitting up here. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously they uh, there's a reason why they're doing that. I'd love to find out why. And uh, you're not doing it for field position, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Western Wayne with excellent field position to start this drive at its own 44-yard line, first down and 10. Even if you kick it out of bounds at the 40, you still they get, still get it at the 35. <laughs> it's yeah, Wildcats by nine, 21 to 12. And Scott Walk trips to the right side. And it will be Walk handing off Harp. Harp at the 45. Nice move, but then is buried on the play. Zach Fiumi led the way with the defensive pursuit. And that will uh, bring an end. Wildcats, are they going to get a playoff? Yes, they will. And this will be Kyle Smith with a touchdown catch. Wow. Wow, how about that? Yeah, reminiscent of the Dan Marino play against the Jets many years ago. Wow, that was like he was some spike play. It. And they just got it off. The, the seconds were ticking away. And Western Wayne just made an and they lead now 27 to 12. I mean, you couldn't play it any better. That was excellent by the Western Wayne Wildcats to keep their composure as time was running out here in the first half and they score the touchdown. Wow. Wow, what a, that probably probably the, the perfect pass. He hit he hit the uh, Smith on the run right in stride for a, a 54-yard touchdown. Scott Walk will attempt the two-point conversion now as uh, he will hand it off to Courtney Harp with blocking Harp turns it upfield, but he's denied the two-point conversion. Great coverage by the Mid Valley Spartans to uh, deny him the two-point conversion. And we are at halftime in this special Monday night football edition of high school football as the Western Wayne Wildcats will go into the locker room leading the Mid-Valley Spartans by the score of 27 to 12. So how about that for a turn of events? You really thought that uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats were going to be content with uh, just playing out the remaining seconds on the uh, clock and it was not to be now uh, what's going on the Mid Valley Spartans not uh, heading for the locker room uh, now they're talking with the I, officials my, my assumption is that they thought the clock ran out well Dave Rebar right now pleading his case with the officials and uh, obviously not happy with the call it was very close it sure was. But looking at the uh, looking at the uh, seconds winding down, and uh, Mid Valley now will head to the locker room as they trail Western. One. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Here we go with third quarter action between the Spartans and the Wildcats. And for the Mid-Valley Spartans, it will be James Urso to kick it off. And we'll see if they'll squib the kick. Yep. Yes, they will. Bouncing around. Bluthal will pick it up at the 34 across the 45-yard line. And uh, then he goes down in a heap at that point. And the Western Wayne Wildcats will have excellent field position to start the second half of play with the football at its own 45, leading 27 to 12. 
Well, Steve, now let's see if uh, Western Wayne can continue to uh, move the ball uh, on the ground with the running of uh, Harp and Haynes and uh, you know, keep the clock moving. Here come the Wildcats as sophomore quarterback Scott Walk will come up under center. Some movement on the defensive line. Adjustments being made and Courtney Harp with a burst of speed bangs his way to the 34 yard line for a huge run and a first down for the Wildcats. But it yeah, appears they adjusted right out of that and opened up the hole naturally for him. Uh, a nice strong 20-yard uh, run to open the and we have a timeout out. call by Mid Valley in the opening moments of the third quarter here on Adams Cable High School football. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn, Garth, and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale, your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. First down and 10 for the Wildcats from the Spartan 34 off the play fake. Scott Walk rolling near Wide side, open. looking man open. Yeah. No, is a, it is not a, it is a case. Is it is. It? Yes. yes. It didn't look like it was from here, but Brandon Toot came up with the catch at the seven yard line, and the Wildcats now are knocking on the door. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it, to me it looked like, Steve, that he had his hands underneath the ball when, he, when, when the ball came down. So Brandon Toot with a great catch, and the 6'1", 200-pound junior comes up with a superior catch, and now it's first down and goal from the seven for the Cats as they break the huddle, and they'll try to get organized now in the line of scrimmage. Toot will line up at tight end. Walk will come up. And out of the power eye, here is the handoff to Courtney Harp. And Hart, Harp will take it down inside down the, the two-yard line to about the one. So the Western Wayne Wildcats not only go into the locker room with momentum, they come out of the locker room the same way, and they pick up the pace here in the third quarter. Second and goal for the Western Wayne Wildcats as they break the huddle with the sophomore quarterback, Scott Walk, to set them down. And here is Walk on a quarterback sneak. And the officials taking a close look at it. Touchdown, yep. Scott Walk. On a one-yard quarterback sneak. And the Wildcats increase their lead to 33-12 to over Mid-Valley. Well, you talk about momentum, guys, and uh, Western Wayne has it right now. Well, no doubt. They, they came out, they came out, and they uh, came out with a scheme there. A nice run by uh, Harp to start it off, and a beautiful fake and a 27-yard pass play to, to two uh, for uh, first down inside the five. And Western Wayne will go for two, leading 33-12. And it is Walk to set them down. And Scott Walk will go off the play fake, looking for a side. Yes, he's got Joe Boyko for the two-point conversion. With 10 minutes and 33 seconds left in the third quarter, Western Wayne leads Mid-Valley 35-12 on Adams Cable High School football. 
The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. Along with Nick Homick and Glenn Muskowski, Steve Young with you for Monday Night High School Football here in Varden. And the Wildcats open up the third quarter of play, scoring a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And now they lead Mid-Valley 35-12 as they will kick it off to the Mid-Valley Spartans. Two are deep for Mid-Valley on the uh, receive team. And Matt Lombardi, the senior uh, kicker, will tee it up for the Western Wayne Wildcats. And... Uh, well, the Wildcats have been squibbing kicks, and once again, same procedure. Up back from, from uh, Mid-Valley will catch the football and take the football out to the 44. And uh, for Mid-Valley, Tom Magnitovich caught that football and uh, recovered. And uh, Mid-Valley will have great field position to uh, commence this drive at their own 44, first down and 10. Well, Mid-Valley now has to really mount a good offensive scheme here and, and get some points on the board as quickly as possible, or this one's going to slip right away. First down and 10 for the Spartans. Tyler Shea out of the shotgun with Tomasetti in the backfield. Low snap, Shea in some trouble. Eludes the rush, turns it upfield, and then pays the price at the 47. He did stay in bounds. Coming to the near side of the field. Well, tough, tough run for Shea that time. No, no, a low snap takes the, the timing off a little bit, and then uh, uh, no, no, nobody open. He had to tuck it and, and run for his life. Picked up about four. But uh, showed a lot of composure after the low snap. As the Spartans will break the huddle, Dan Wood will be a wideout at the top of your screen as... Shea will take the snap out of the gun, looking near side, and Colin Munley on the reception for a, maybe a gain of a yard to uh, the 49, and that's about all, not much there. Sophomore uh, coming out of the backfield as a receiver, 5'8 and 145 pounds. And the Wildcat faithful get the chant going. They want defense. Third down and five for Mid-Valley from its own 49-yard line with 9.37 to play, third quarter trailing 35 to 12. Shea this time will go against the grain, fires a bullet downfield. Oh, it's great defense. Oh, great defensive effort by the Munley. Western Wayne Wildcats. Munley had that in his hands. It was just stripped out of his hands before he hit the ground. Great Kyle Haynes defense. took it away from him, and that was a perfect pass by Shea. That was a bullet. No, it's just a, just, just a great defensive play by Haynes. Well, the fans here tonight enjoying uh, soup, hot chocolate, pretzels. I don't know, guys. I'm pretty hungry now. <laughs> I'm looking hey. at the food, the people coming up into the stands with the, with the great food here in Barton. Okay, Anthony, take a timeout and go get some. <laughs> Here's the punt. And it is uh, taken by the Western Wayne uh, Wildcats, Kyle Haynes. We back, have back probably the illegal block. Yard, by the 25-yard line, but the flag on the play. And the fans right here not happy with the uh, call, but basically for the most part a well-played football game thus far. Here's the uh, indication from the field. Of course. Yep, illegal block. That's usually the call. And uh, that will uh, well, that, set the Wildcats back. That fly came out real quick, so there was, uh, there was, you know, not even a question. From the 27-yard line, Western Wayne will go to work on this drive, leading 35 to 12. This is, except for the the on the three-yard line that they got the ball stopped in Val. This is the worst field position Western Wayne had. 
Scott Walk will give it to Courtney Harp, and he lowers his shoulder and just plows straight ahead and, fall, and is dropped at the 30-yard line. Joe Healy, the right tackle of the Mid-Valley defense, uh, making the stop for Spartans. As Western Wayne will talk it over in the huddle on second down and seven after a three yard gain. And this time Scott Walk will uh, operate out of the shotgun. Oh, oh everybody moved that time. There was movement all over the field and flags come out. It looks like Canadian football for a little bit there. <laughs> 10 yard head start. <laughs> And it was all the receivers, too. It wasn't yeah, just yeah. one. It wasn't one. All the did, linemen did the, they'd put, I think the Did the center the forget the snap count? <laughs> I, don't know. I think all the linemen got the memo about what the snap yeah. count was. The receivers did <laughs> Yeah, they definitely were not on the same page that time. And uh, that will be a five-yard penalty and move the football to the 26-yard line <laughs> and result in second down and 12. <laughs> Canadian in the arena league. I think they can have one guy in motion. <laughs> it it looked more years. like soccer than it did look yeah. like football. And it is Scott Walk out of the gun with time. Looks, throws, and it is complete to Kyle Haynes at midfield. One block. And Haynes will go. Say goodbye to Kyle Haynes for the touchdown. 76 yards, I believe. Ball was at the uh, 26, uh, 74, yards. 74 yards. So Kyle wow. Haynes and Scott Walk hook up on the 74 yard touchdown pass. And right now, the Western Wayne Wildcats are rocking, leading 41 to 12 with 8.14 left third quarter. Guys, if they can put together, like we think, with this schedule coming up, a nice string of win wins. They do have the tools. They do have the player makers to, to really make some noise in the playoffs if they can get there. If they can uh, keep playing well. Matt Lombardi on for the point after. And here is the extra point. Oh. It's the crossbar. No good. We were just talking. <laughs> Nick and I were just talking about the goal post, and uh, Nick brought up a good point. Nick, what was your point? <laughs> when you look at that, this, these goalposts over here, Steve? Yes, on your left. Yeah, when you're sitting down with the concession stand, they don't exactly look straight. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like someone like somebody's ran. Been hang, it looks like Jimmy Graham's been hanging on him for a <laughs> couple times. With 8.14 left, third quarter, 41-12, Western Wayne on Adams Cable High School Football. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. 41-12, your score. Western Wayne with 8-14 left third quarter. Matt Lombardi will kick it away for the Western Wayne Wildcats. This oh. time, the high end over end kick will be caught near the 15-yard line and uh, a return by the Mid-Valley Spartans, and here they come as they will take it around, and that is Cody Petcavage. And Peck Cabbage at the 20 yard line and is dragged down at the 15 yard line. So Cody Pet Cabbage doing a good job for the uh, Mid Valley Spartans on the punt return team. And maybe that, maybe guys, that's the reason that uh, they didn't want to kick to them all during the biggest portion of this football be. game. It could be. You never know. Or he's just so anxious to get a chance to return it. <laughs> yeah. took off. Hey, they're finally kicking it to me. I'm going to make something out of this. The, the right? one thing that's troubling me, and I've seen it with both teams today, a couple of times some guys have really been on the open field and they have one man to beat and they're turning around looking for the guy to come catch him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Run for the pylon and get there. Just as go as for it. And the reason I say that is because if you get dragged down like the old horse collars, that's where you see a lot of injuries happen. Shea fires a pass and it is caught by Zach Fiumi for the touchdown. 13 yards from Tyler Shea to Zach Fiumi. And it is a Mid-Valley touchdown with 7.49 left here in the third quarter. You might get a roughing the pass route here, too. There's a lot of extracurricular going on with uh, Shea, and I don't know who the defender was, but the official right on it. So uh, the officials right now are talking things over. Be assessed on the kick, I assume, right? Boy, that was, uh, that was a bullet from Tyler Shea. And the uh, decline by Mid Valley, of course, and uh, the touchdown will stand. They'll How take would you it. Decline it. That, that, that should be a dead ball foul. Well, unless unless it happened well, on the I, pass. I shouldn't say it's a dead ball, but still, I thought that they would have to. Uh, it's a personal foul, in other words. 41-18 as uh, Mid Valley answers with a touchdown. And the, uh, the officials will pick up the laundry and put it back where it belongs. And we'll get ready now as Mid-Valley will talk it over. Well, you're right, guys. That was a bullet. Sure was. Uh, Shea. Uh, and a great catch, too. Yes, it he was. Took a, he took a pop when he. In a lot of traffic. Yep. He probably got, he probably, ball was over the, the line of scrimmage. Yeah, movement more, on the line, more left a, side of the line. And more Canadian football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks more like Canadian football the longer we sit here. Just Toronto Argonauts <laughs> and the Winnipeg Jets or whatever their names are. <laughs> so a five-yarder assessed against Mid-Valley will set them back five. And uh, we'll do it again. They'll try it all <laughs> over again. Trailing 41-18 as they go for two. They should have accepted the penalty. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Shea, <laughs> Shea will drop back, and he looks end zone for Danny Wood. Did he make it? No. Out of bounds. Dan Wood with a great catch in the right corner of the end zone, but out of bounds. Well, a question that one. And with seven minutes and 49 seconds left to play third quarter, it is Western Wayne leading. Mid Valley 41 to 18 here on Adams Cable High School Football. When your car does this. <laughs> call us first. Every job is perfect or it doesn't leave the shop. That's the motto at Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale. In an accident, remember, it is your car and your choice to choose your repair center. Call Beston's Auto Body and Collision Center in Carbondale, well known for integrity, safety, and craftsmanship. For more information concerning your rights and the 10 things you need to know before having your car repaired, go to their website, bestinsautobody.com. Good luck to all area teams. From Tony, Mike, Jeff, and the staff at Bestins Auto Body and Collision Center, Gordon Avenue, Carbondale. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Varden. Along with Nick Homick, Glenn Muskowski, Steve Young with you for special edition of Monday Night High School Football here on Channel 7, 41-18, your score. Western Wayne leading this football game with 7.49 to play third quarter. And Mid-Valley now will tee up the football and kick off to the Wildcats. Uh, we can't say there's not enough action in this I game. That's for say, sure. <laughs> this might be the highest scoring game we've had in a while. Well, we've There's been on both plenty. ends of the spectrum. I mean, we had Valley View and Lakeland in a defensive struggle, and here tonight, points are really flying up on the scoreboard. Definitely no uh, zero yards passing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that, that amazed a lot of people when you told them that stat. Yeah, yeah look at this. Uh, Mid-Valley goes with the onside kick, and I believe they'll get it. They will. Yep. So... Western Wayne surprises Mid-Valley with seconds on the clock to end the first half with a touchdown. Mid-Valley comes up and they uh, catch w Western Wayne on their heels with an onside kick and they get the football in excellent field position. But if I might make a point, guys, it's not exactly like they didn't know the squib was coming. Yeah. They've been doing it all yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> like last time, like we said, they kicked it deep. That's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> 
Here we go with Mid Valley in Wildcat territory at the 48, first down and 10. And Shea out of the gun, looks far side, and the pass is incomplete intended for Mike LaRusso. Good coverage in the secondary by uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats, Courtney Harp. Yeah, Western Wayne has to be very careful here. I mean, yeah, they're still by 20. Uh, yeah, but you know. 20 doesn't mean anything. There's plenty. There's this, this clock is not moving Not in a game off. like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, gotta, you give up another score here. I mean, you, you're putting yourself under a lot of pressure to execute now, you know? And here comes the Mid Valley Spartans as Tyler Shea takes a low snap coming near side. He'll keep the football, tucks it under, and uh, Shea will uh, slide down at the 36 yard line. And uh, if that's where they spot the football, he's got the first down. Yep, good 12 yard run by Shea. And uh, Mid Valley. Sustaining the drive with the first down at the 36. And uh, right now they're on the move, trailing 41-18. Guys, we might be here a while. <laughs> well, we have any place else to go? <laughs> to work tomorrow morning. Kids got school tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, dear. They're not used to this. No. <laughs> no. First down and 10, Mid-Valley from the Wildcat 36. As Shea. He'll work out of the shotgun, off the fake. Shea will keep and uh, just dive forward yeah. and get back to That's the line of scrimmage. Excellent. Now, guys, have you noticed that they're not giving the ball to uh, Tomasetti? I have noticed that, but yeah. Yeah, he's still in the ball game. He's yeah, he's in the not, ball game. Yeah, but, he, uh, he's going to draw a crowd no matter where he goes. And that was a great penetration by Matt Witt on the defensive, uh, from the defensive side of the ball that time. Second down and about 11 for Mid Valley as they will uh, break the huddle. Zach Fiumi is a wide out on the far side, and uh, Dan Wood will come as a receiver on the near side. And uh, Shea takes the snap, dumps off a pass. It's Tomasetti with the football, and Tomasetti is run out of bounds inside the 20 yard line, caught at the 18. He must have heard you, Steve. Or uh, Coach Rebar heard me. Right. Coach, you're calling a great game over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what ha what's happening is, is they're, they're faking. They're, they're, Thomas said he's fake the ball to Thomas said He's going up the middle, and, and, and no one's staying with him at all. Once you're, you're asking a, a linebacker in high school to do a lot by covering a back out of the backfield. Well, that's true, but he was, Six. But he was wide open. 6-21 to play, third quarter, 41-18, Western Wayne. Mid Valley on the move right here as Shea will dump off a pass. Wood has it at the 11, and Wood draws a crowd and then is muscled down at the 8-yard line. Brandon Toot, the middle linebacker of the Wildcat defense, leading the way defensively for Western Wayne. Here, here's what Mid Valley is really having success with. Those past two plays have been backs out of the backfield or they've had uh, their slot receivers cross. And what, what obviously is happening is, is Western Wayne is forced to play a zone with this spread offense. And what those crossing routes do is it confuses who's supposed to, you know, they're basically eating up the guy in the zone and they're giving it to the free guy. From the eight yard line, Tyler Shea back in the pocket, pump fake. Shea looking for the end zone around that far side, lowers the shoulder and he's in for an eight yard touchdown. Tyler Shea. Nice move, a cutback on the far side of the field for an eight-yard touchdown. And uh, suddenly, Mid-Valley answers with a touchdown, and they trail 41-24 with 5.49 remaining third quarter. You got a two-point conversion here. You got a two-score two score game. So uh, Mid-Valley not backing down here in Varden, and they will uh, go for two. So we have a dandy football game here in Varden on this Monday night. Here come the Spartans out of the huddle. And Tyler Shea, the senior quarterback, will have Thomas Setti lined up in the backfield with him. And uh, they give the football to Thomas Setti and he bangs his way in for an uncontested touchdown. 
And the two-point conversion is good. 41-26 your score as Mid-Valley answers with the touchdown and the two-point conversion as we go to a break on Adams Cable High School Football. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team in NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield, online at njsco.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Now, back to more action with Nick Glenn and Steve on Adams Cable High School Football. Back to more action here in Varden at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex. 5.49 to play third quarter. Western Wayne leading this one 41-26. And Mid-Valley, after the touchdown and two-point conversion, will tee up the football and kick off to the Wildcats. It looks like they have some sure hands people up on the front now. And uh, looks like Urso will be doing the kicking. And uh, this time they'll boot it a little bit deeper. Blue Thaw will come up, catch the football at the 21. And he will protect the football and uh, take it out across the 30-yard line. And that's where the uh, Western Wayne Wildcats will take over. First but down and 10. That's a smart placement of the kick. You know, you kick it in that little soft spot in the zone. There's only one man back deep to return. He's got a lot of ground to cover to go get that. And uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats, well, let's see, where are they going to mark this ball? They move it, they add it up on the 31, back to the 30. Okay, so, uh, now now we, we go look, and now we look at Western Wayne and say, hey, you better get that momentum back, or this is going to go down to the wire. And uh, Western Wayne goes to work offensively with the football first down and 10. As Scott Walk will hand it off, and this is Kyle Haynes with a sweep around the right side, and Haynes is caught by linebacker Justin Klein making the tackle. Well, if you're Western Wayne, obviously you know, you'd like to love the score right here, but most importantly, you know, pick up a few first downs in doing so. Yeah, you got you got to you got to get this game into the fourth quarter. Yeah, you want to they uh, they want to shorten the game right here. You've got the. Uh, a three and out does nothing for you, and if yeah. anything, it, it hurts you worse than you know. Hey, really, because you give the ball back to a hot Mid Valley offense. You're up 41 26. A uh, couple of first downs, get some momentum going, keep that clock rolling. As uh, Scott Walk will uh, survey the Mid Valley defense and an eye formation in the backfield. And it is, uh, look like Haynes once again getting the carry and uh, stopped at the line of scrimmage. And the Western Wayne Wildcats, uh, they will send Kyle Coons into the football game wearing number 28, six foot, 175 pounds senior with the play from head coach Donnie McDonough. Courtney Harp's over here on the sideline on a knee right, without a helmet on too. I don't know. He maybe yeah. got banged up a little bit. He's standing with the trainer, so. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that situation and see if uh, he will get back into the ball game. As, he want uh, the ball in his hands in this situation. Oh, you Third down and six for the Cats. And Walk will hand it off to Haynes, and he will come across the 35 and goes yeah, airborne across what, the 40. And I'll tell you what, he knew exactly where he had to go that time, and it was a, it was a great uh, run and a nice block on the end to spring him. And uh, Courtney Harp is checking back into the ball game. Uh, Maybe he needed a breather, I don't know, but uh, he's back in there for the Wildcats. Now for uh, Mid-Valley, Dan Wood will check out of the ball game and go to the far sideline. 41-26, your score. The Wildcats lead the Spartans. Three and a half minutes to play, third quarter. 
And it is Scott Walk with the handoff uh, to Harp, and Harp is dragged down after a short game. Tackle on the play by uh, John Leskevich, 5'9", 240-pound junior for Mid-Valley. Second down and eight. And uh, right here, this is where uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats would uh, like to get their offense going. Well, a, a couple first downs, as Nick said, takes this game right into the fourth quarter. And if they continue to have the ball, they put a score on. Makes it a little bit more difficult for Mid-Valley to, to continue that momentum. And Walk will have Harp as the lone setback. On second down and eight yards to go. And off the play fake, it is Walk looking downfield and the pass is tipped and a great play in the secondary by Colin Munley, the sophomore. His man was behind him. He, if he doesn't make that play. Again, the, the run to the left, throw to the right, uh, Nick. A little, little bit more difficult than you think. Yeah, but he, you know, Walk did a great job because he set his feet. He didn't try to rush that throw either. You know, a lot of times yeah, we've, oh been yes. seeing, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, kids, they try to rush that throw and they don't get the, you know, they don't get everything underneath that, that throw that they need to. Well executed play by the Wildcats, uh, but a great defensive effort in the secondary by Mid Valley. Third down and eight. The Cats from their own 44. Here's Walk going to work. Nice move, comes near side. Smith with the football. Smith across midfield, breaks a couple of tackles, popped and well, then he is dropped on the play. Tell you what, he had the first down and when he got hit, he, he just backed up and then they, the whole Mid-Valley team uh, came right, right to the point of attack. And you couldn't have painted that any better for the folks out there. Really, he did, he had his momentum going forward that he, you know, the first collision sent him backwards and he tried to keep going. Well, here it is, a big fourth down play for Western Wayne with the football at midfield. It is fourth down and two. I think you've won it here, guys. Uh, I, I, I think you have to. I mean, you got to make them go at the length of the field. This is a very similar situation to what you saw before. Mm -hmm. And the Wildcats will roll the dice right here, and they will yes. give it to Harp, and Harp is spun down. I, I don't think he's got it. He's going to be short as we uh, take a look at where the football will be spotted. No, he's not even close. He's a yard short. So this is the second time that uh, Mid, Mid Valley has come up big defensively on a fourth down play. And the Wildcats not happy with the spot of the football. Are they going to go for a, are they going to have a measurement here? You know, both set. You can't move the ball. Move the ball. Well, now you could hear, uh, you could hear fans uh, not happy with uh, the ball was moved or whatever's going on. First down Mid Valley. Wow. I don't know what the indeci indecision was there. No, there was. They, I don't even think he was close. No, it wasn't close. His knee was down. Yeah, he was. The, the official who spotted over on this, this near side gave him a very favorable spot. Really? He, yeah, had, that he was. had the better vantage point. So uh, Mid Valley comes up big defensively with 130 left here in the third quarter, trailing 41 26. They take over possession of the football at their own 49-yard line, first down and 10. Now, uh, guys, if you're Mid Valley here, you take a shot downfield? Uh, why not? Why, why not? not? I think so. I think you got the momentum. Shea will go against the grain, rolling to the far side, looks downfield, oh. passes incomplete, and the receiver was open. Well, that Mundley should, that, was open. That should have been caught, I would think. That was, uh, that was a perfect you, pass. You want to talk about... A guy's throwing, the, putting the ball on the money. Shea has been putting the ball on the money he all sure night. He sure has. He's got a gun. He could throw the football, no doubt about it. You know, Mid Valley does run a really nice offense. I think. You know, they, they they do the things that they know what they can do well. Well, and it's a young team, and and uh, I, I as you saw heard in the interview, Coach Rebar is excited about these kids. I would, uh, if I was here, I would be too. Second down and 10, Mid Valley from its own 49. It is Shea dumping off the pass to Wood, and he's inside Wildcat territory at the 48, but then got whacked on the play. 
Scott Walk in on the tackle for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Third down situation now coming up. Third and about seven. We have exactly one minute left, third quarter of play. Well, what do you think, Nick? Uh, uh, if you're Mid Valley, don't make it here. You go, you go out on a fourth down. You might just as well. You a gambler or not? I'd say you at least have to pick up five to make it a realistic. Oh yeah, of course. Shea out of the shotgun. Pr plenty of time. Looks downfield. Danny Wood, intended receiver, passes off the mark, and the Western Wayne Wildcats. Come up big defensively. I think they're going to roll the dice here, guys. But. Now they're talking it over in the huddle. I tell you, 35 some, seconds left. In some the of these third. decisions are fourth down amazing. And, fourth down and seven. The game certainly changed, guys. The game's changed. <laughs> From... The 48-yard line of Western Wayne. Shea to throw, rushes on. He eludes a tackler, fires downfield. It is complete to Fiumi at the 32-yard line. Good for a Mid-Valley first down. A number of times Fiumi's come up with some big plays in key situations so he far. He sure has. Boy, the 5'9", 155-pound sophomore found a way to get open. Shea, Shea eludes gave, a tackler. He, gave, he had a lot of time there. He was uh, rolling out. He gave himself some more time to, to, for the receiver to get open. And, I, you know, I like the way they're, they're running their routes, the completion, then they're going to the open area. You know, this Mid-Valley team uh, not just rolling over and saying, hey, we're done here tonight. They're fighting their way right back into this one as they trail 41-26. 26 seconds to play, third quarter, first and 10 Spartans from the 32-yard line of the Cats. Shea, perfect pass. Wood has it. Wood is down to the seven-yard line of Western Wayne. The ball was loose, but I think he was uh, down on the play. And Mid-Valley will be knocking on the door with 16.5 seconds to play here in the third. Well, a couple of things here, guys. Excellent execution on that play. Perfect. Really. Just that, that type of seam post route. Woods a big, big target. Threw right on the money. Hit him right between the eight and the six. Guys, the Western Wayne defense has been on the field in this second half for quite a while. And right now, Mid Valley gaining momentum with every play. I think he just let it run down, regroup. And I think he gave a nice dose of number 11 right here. And yeah. <laughs> the clock will yep. just, just run. Just a hunch, guys. But. Yeah. And that will bring it into the third quarter of play here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden with your score. Western Wayne 41, Mid Valley 26. Hang on, folks. Fourth quarter is coming up next on Adams Cable High School Football. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Homes, located at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale, offer all types of funeral services. In your time of need, call 282-1219 for the ultimate in professional service. From Lawrence A. Gabriel Jr., family, and staff, good luck this season to our local athletes and teams. Here's great news from Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale that can save you money and make shopping for your prescriptions more convenient. Figlamini now has an $8.95 generic drug plan and free local delivery. Figlamini offers diabetic shoes, lift chairs, and home health supplies. That's what sets Figlamini apart from the chains. Locally owned and trusted since 1929. Stop in and see the difference for yourself at Figlamini Drugstore in Carbondale, where your you're not just a number, your family. The action continues from the 50-yard line with Nick, Glenn, and Steve on Channel 7 High School Football. Welcome to fourth quarter action in this Monday night high school football matchup between Mid-Valley and Western Wayne. The Spartans trail the Wildcats 41-26 as we get ready for the fourth quarter here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden. 
You want action. You've certainly had it tonight. Yes, we have, and it's not over yet. By no means. Mid-Valley now in good shape with the football. First down and goal from the Wildcats 7. And Tyler Shea, the senior quarterback. Well, uh, now we're going to have the official stepping in and uh, let's find out what's going on here as uh, they will get together and have a conference. Uh, play clock will get set. Here we yeah, go. there was five seconds on yeah, it. Yeah, play clock took off <laughs> rather early. <laughs> Now we'll get ready. And Shea out of the gun, back to throw. Shea sees an opening, there he goes, and Shea will lower the shoulder and drive down to the one yard line. Gain of a plus six and a second and goal. This has been one heck of a football game here tonight between the Spartans and the Wildcats. And the Wildcats have really played their hearts out, putting 41 points on the board. But right now, the Spartans have the momentum. Second and goal from the one for the Mid Valley Spartans as Shea will hand yeah. it off to Tomasetti for the one yard touchdown run. Who would have thought this was going to happen? Uh, unbelievable. But no. This is still, this is a big time. You, if you go for two here, they make it a seven point game if you're, if you're successful. 41-32 with 11 minutes and 16 seconds to play in the fourth quarter as uh, Mid Valley will uh, go for the two point conversion. And here they come to the line of scrimmage as Michael Russo will be split to the near side. And Shea this time will come up under center. Tomasetti lines up in the backfield. And Shea will roll out looking and the pass is incomplete intended for Fiumi. And with 11-16 to play in the fourth, Wildcats lead this one 41-32 here on Adams Cable High School Football. Enjoy the feel of deep, rich luxury. Get the drama of radiant color and experience the timeless beauty, comfort, and durability of carpeting from Tom's Floor Shop and Childs. Tom's Floor Shop offers a large selection of hardwood, laminate, vinyl, ceramic tile, and carpeting on display in their showroom. Rely on Tom's Floor Shop for expert installation. All roads lead to where great floors begin at Tom's Floor Shop. Exit 6 off the Casey Highway in Childs. Improve the appearance of your property with the help of Nick's Excavating and Paving of Carbondale. Nick's Excavating and Paving provides the highest quality service in residential and commercial excavating, paving and seal coating, demolition, land clearing, foundations, driveways, sidewalks and utility lines. Nick's Excavating and Paving also delivers sand, stone, topsoil and mulch. For prompt professional service, call Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale. Welcome back to Varden at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex on this Monday night, 41 to 32 your score as the uh, Mid Valley Spartans score the touchdown. The two point conversion was denied by the Western Wayne Wildcats and now Mid Valley tees it up and they will kick off to Western Wayne with uh, plenty of time on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Well, Western Wayne's got to get their act together here now and control the football. Well, here's the squib kick bouncing around, and it is caught by Western Wayne at the 46-yard line. So Western Wayne will have excellent field position as they start this drive with 11, 11 minutes and 14 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter. Well, it looks, like to me, looks to me like no team cared about field position at all in no. this game. No, they? that was not a priority. <laughs> and I never would have thought there were 73 points scored in this nope. game. Can't, I, I, just, I was just looking at that. I said 73 points. That's amazing. Hey, it's so Monday still, Night Football. <laughs> it's 11 minutes to go still. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the scoring's done. No. I have the same feeling. <laughs> Here we go from the 47 as the Wildcats take over on offense. Scott Walk will go on a handoff and uh, Harp, I believe, has the football stacked up after a short gain on the play. 
Now, guys, if you're Western Wayne, 41-32, you definitely want to uh, run the football, shorten this game, but you really need to be smart and uh, pick up some first downs. First downs. Well, That's yeah, the key. You, you, need, you need to go back to your game plan that you started, in the, they had in the beginning of this game where they, where they ran the ball effectively and they, they pounded the ball down the field. You don't, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna have to pass a lot where, you, where the clock stops. The, the luxury I think Western Wayne does have, though, it's still a two-score. That is exact, exactly. So Nick. you can't get so one-dimensional that you screw yourself over. Second down and eight, and Western Wayne will give it to Harp, and he's dragged down by Tomasetti at midfield. And third down is coming up for Western Wayne. You know, uh, they had those quick hitters early in the game, but, but Harp running off tackle. But, I, you know, I, you, I would think you, 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 may, you may want to run away from Tomasetti. <laughs> Just a hunch, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I like the calls that they're trying to run in between the tackles. I, I you know, stretch plays and things like that. They worked early on, but they, you know, McVally made the adjustments mm -hmm. for those. Third down and seven. Haynes one on one out here for the Western Wayne Wildcats as Coach. Scott Walk will look near side. Walk rolling out. The rush is on. Walk will pay the price. He would had him initially. And then it was John Laskavich coming up to finish him off for Mid-Valley. And this Spartan football team right now is pumped up. A lot of momentum going for Mid-Valley. And the punting unit will come on for the Wildcats. Well, I would hope they came on. And, and you know, they really, how, how many times have they punted tonight? Well, they're going to punt this time. I, well, I, yeah, I think you have to. I mean, that's. I don't know if they punted. I don't didn't. think they have. They did not. We did not see Kyle Coons in the ball game tonight in punt formation. So this is big for a number of reasons. Colin Munley will await the kick at his own 23-yard line. And Kyle Coons is in to punt for the Wildcats. Good snap. Boy, short punt. It will go out of bounds somewhere near the 40-yard line of Mid-Valley, so they'll get excellent field position. Danny Wood was going for the block, and he got upended going in to uh, try to block that punt. So the football will be marked at the Spartan 39-yard line. First down and 10, 834 to play fourth quarter, 41-32 your score. The Wildcats lead the Spartans. Well, you can bet Tyler Shea's coming out firing now. <laughs> no doubt about it. I don't think they'd be running too many dive plays mm -hmm. here. Shea will work out of the shotgun with Tomasetti in the backfield. And Shea back to throw, fires Wood. What a catch if it's good. Yes, that is perfect. He was, he had his hands up in the air, stretched up, pulled, up, hauled in the pass at the 41-yard line. Good for a Spartan first down. They don't look like an 0-3 team to me. No, they don't. <laughs> and right now, the Wildcats look like a team that are on the ropes, just trying to buy some time and get through the, get through and to the final bell as uh, this pass out in the flat is no good intended for Colin Munley. Well, I'll tell you, the reason it was no good because he, he, a good stick was put on him that time, but he had it in his hands. I'll tell you what, though. If somebody's here from GAR Scout, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they better get back and start coaching up some defense for next week. Second down and 10. The Spartans from the Wildcat 41, 819. It seems Mid, like uh, there's Mid Valley of time. needs a big, big uh, defensive stand here. Oh, it looks like uh, Shea back in the pocket. Pass is complete. Tomasetti at the 30. Tomasetti still on his feet. Tomasetti will go for the 41 yard touchdown with eight minutes and six seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Tomasetti, how about that? Tiptoed along the near sidelines, stayed in bounds, and it's 41 to 38. I'm gonna play a little Chris Collinsworth here. I don't wanna say I told you so about those little those little wheel routes of, for Tomasetti out earlier in the game. Remember he kept <laughs> just kept sneaking out in the flat? Right. Well, well it's paid dividends. 
Here is Mid Valley trailing 41 38. They'll go for two. Shea keeps, gets the, he will, uh, did he hand no. it off? Yeah, yes, he, he handed had, it off Thomas, and. Uh, no, Thomas said he's run. Was no good. He was stopped short of the goal line. So with eight minutes and six seconds left in the fourth quarter, Western Wayne now clinging to a 41 38 lead over Mid Valley on Adams Cable High School Football. The Waymart Building Center carries quality materials for every job, including new home construction, remodeling, or that simple weekend project. The Waymart Building Center will supply everything to make your job easy, including plumbing and electrical supplies, hardware, tools, and paint. Remember, you don't have to drive far to find building or remodeling supplies. Stop by and see Chuck at your hometown building center, the Waymart Building Center. Looking for great prices and special offers on top quality parts and accessories? You'll find them at Napa Auto Parts. Visit Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale for great savings while supplies last. Only at Napa. Stop in and see Glenn Garth and the staff at Tonkin Auto Supply in Carbondale, your know-how folks. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Back to the gridiron for more Adams Cable High School football. Well, folks, it was 41-26, the Wildcats leading at the end of three. And suddenly, with 8.06 left here in the fourth, 41-38 as the Spartans come up with a couple of big touchdowns, and uh, now they will tee it up and kick off to the Wildcats. 22 unanswered points here, guys. Unbelievable, the turn of events here tonight. Now the kickoff by James Urso. It's feel that. Kick, rolling around, you and Munley kidding. has it. <laughs> Munley has the football. Oh, my. That just worked to perfection, the onside kick. Wow. Well, I, I've, I've never seen a change of uh, momentum this much in a game. And uh, mid, uh, Western Wayne, after they scored two scores in the third quarter, sky high, and they are probably as low as they can be right now. They, were, they went into the locker room really on a high going into the locker room after catching uh, Mid Valley off guard with that uh, play. They, with seconds on the clock, the Spartans thought that Mid Valley was going to, uh, or uh, they thought Western Wayne was going to spike the football and they take it for a touchdown. But boy, Mid Valley showed a lot of composure here in the second half and uh, they hand off the football. This is Thomas Setti breaking tackles, dropped on the play for no gain. Joe Boinko, the uh, strong, uh, safety strong side on the so strong side in that defensive uh, set for the Western Wayne Wildcats making the tackle. 7:42 left in the fourth, 41-38. Your score. Western Wayne now clinging to the lead, hang just trying to hang on. As Tyler Shea will split Larusso along with Munley, wide right. There's a pass, far side, it's intercepted by the Western Wayne Wildcats. And that's Haynes. Haynes picked it off. Nope, is that, no it's, yeah it is Haynes. Yes, Kyle is. Haynes picked it off, he is the cornerback in that uh, defensive alignment. I'll tell you what, if he, can, if he could have kept his feet, he may have gone all the way with that one. Boy, would the, the Mid Valley, well, would Western they Wayne needed, needed that. They definitely needed that, guys. Well, what they need here, too, is a lot of first downs. Still. Well, right here, yeah, 7-18, still plenty of time. So, uh, well, we talked about the uh, strategy now for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Got some momentum right now after the turnover. Can you do something with it? First down and 10 from the 33 for the Cats. Walk will hand it off. Last man through, look like Haynes going straight up the middle and is uh, stopped after a short gain to the 38-yard uh, line. 
He picked up about six on that. Yeah, that yeah. Looked, looked like uh, less there, but uh, after they unpile, he got a lot more than I thought he did, and uh, a good run on the play. So now the, the key factor is the clock, if you're the Wildcats. Now that's Mid Valley's first time out of the, uh, is it is it an official timeout or is it official timeout? Is that an equipment issue? That could be a problem with the with the equipment. And uh, we'll be getting back to let's find out. They're going to send the Wildcats back to the huddle. You say if I were Here Western we Wayne, I certainly wouldn't be coming out of the huddle that quick. Not no, you want to uh, and keep that clock running with 6.45 left in the fourth. Now, Walk will come to the line of scrimmage. You're breaking the huddle and jumping up to the line of scrimmage and having to wait 15 seconds. Yeah, play clock now down to five. You want to take more time off the clock as they give it to Haynes, and Haynes on a sweep near side takes the football that's, across the 40-yard line. That should be a first down. It's going to be close. Well, they're dead. They're, they're, 40, let's check where the spot is going to be. It looks like it's a first down. First down, yep. The officials Boy. will signal for the uh, chain gang to move the sticks well, on the far side. It, it would be a heck of a thing to move the ball, then measure yeah. it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Again, never understood that. Forty-one thirty-eight. your score, Western Wing. Hanging on to the lead as we near six minutes left in the football game. First and ten for the Wildcats from their own 43-yard line. And again, and Nick, now, we don't see Courtney Harpin there at all. And a walk will take the snap. He'll give it to Haynes. He lost the football, and Mid-Valley has it. Tom, I believe Tom Egnatovich recovered. Now the officials are taking a close look at this. It looked as though Egnatovich had the football initially. And Mid Valley has it. No, no. Let's, let's wait. Let's wait. That's. Is he calling that down by contact? Could. Wildcats have it. It looked as though Tom Egnatovich had it, but uh, Western Wayne will keep possession, and the clock continues to run. Five fourteen and counting. And the uh, football at the 46. Here come the Wildcats to the line of scrimmage. Kyle Coons will be a wide out on the far side. As Scott Walk will have Haynes as the lone setback. Haynes will take the handoff. Haynes with a burst of speed carries the football across midfield this is, this into Spartan territory at the 47. This all depends on a mark also. This is close once again. I think he's got it, but. Yeah. Toss that ball around. I don't know who's got the spot. <laughs> Not first, first down. Three-point football game, 41-38. Wildcats lead. It's like a Keystone Cops routine. Who's got, who's got the spot out here? <laughs> now the play clock. If you're the Wildcats, you want to take that play clock right down to the final seconds. They'll approach the line of scrimmage with 10 on the play clock. And uh, now the play clock down to two seconds, and they'll snap the football. Perfect execution, and uh, Haynes was drilled by Tomasetti yeah. in the backfield for a loss on the play. Now that, that does a few big things there, because now it puts you in a second and long. They really got a favorable spot. Mm -hmm. oh my yeah, they, they sure did. Wow. Guys, am I watching the same game here? I, <laughs> Nick, let's go to the video, video replay. <laughs> oh, oh, Albert Costello will be rolling over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it seems like it's, it's a, it's a one-dimensional thing now, now Nick. Uh, uh, the dose of Haynes, Haynes, Haynes. Hey, there's, there's, the there's heart. Back in, but, but still, I mean, it puts you in a second and long still. Play clock down to five seconds when they snap the football, and Harp is back in there, wrapped up by Dan Wood at the line of scrimmage. Play is blown dead. Oh, is it? Courtney Harp seemed as though he got out of the grasp of Wood, but uh, boy, what a great defensive play by Dan Wood that time. 
clock uh, stopped right now with three minutes and nine seconds. But why are they stopping the clock? Okay, I think uh, Mid Valley may have called a timeout. Yeah, no one's going nope. to the sidelines. The now official's the, uh, over here, but why is he? You want that clock running. Or do they want an adjustment on the clock? Uh, I think they want some time on the clock. 312 they put back on. Yeah, 312. There we go. There's a break in the action. Timeout call by the Spartans. 312 left in the fourth. 41-38 Western Wayne on Adams Cable High School Football. The White's Crossing Sports Shop, Canaan Street in Carbondale, is the leading authority for the outdoors in northeastern Pennsylvania. They carry a full line of archery accessories, hunting and reloading supplies, live bait, and a variety of fishing tackle. The White's Crossing Sports Shop is open seven days a week from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 282-4699 or log on to their website at whitescrossing.com. Finding that unique seasonal outdoor item has never been easier with help from Tom and the staff at the White's Crossing Sports Shop. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex here in Barton with Glenn Muskowski, Nick Homick. I'm Steve Young. Great to have you on board tonight. This has been one heck of a football game, folks. Three minutes and 12 seconds left in the fourth, and it's not over yet. 41-38 Western Wayne. They have the football third and 10 from the Mid-Valley 47-yard line, and after the timeout, here they come to the line of scrimmage. So real quick, what happened there is once Mid Valley got, once that play was blown dead, they call a timeout. That's and they why they put the time back. Walk will operate out of the shotgun. Back to throw, looking, and he oh. passes incomplete for Brandon Toot. Toot was open, but the pass was just overthrown at the 25-yard line. Gutsy call. Sure is. If it works, you look like a genius. If not, you're punt. Now it is fourth down and 10 yards to go for the Western Wayne Wildcats. Are they going to punt, though? <laughs> well, that's another question. It looks like uh, Coons is in there, and uh, they will bring well, the punting unit This is on. the second punt, and the first one went five yards, and let's, let's uh, well, see what happens. Here's the thing. You got your quarterback and your receiver as upbacks. Now Munley now will drop back. Kyle oh. Coons shanks it off his foot and it will bounce at the 43 and a roll out of bounds at the 39 yard line. So Mid Valley will get the football back with two minutes and 59 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter, trailing by three, 30, 41, 38. You know, when you, when you, when you think of this whole big scheme of things, if, if uh, Western Wayne picked up a first down there, this game, uh, pretty much, pretty much history. was history, exactly. Because I don't know if Mid Valley had any timeouts left. Well, folks, hang on. This has really been a wild football game in Varden. If, if the scoreboard is correct, I'm sorry to interrupt, Steve. Go right if ahead. If the scoreboard is correct, I believe Mid Valley would have the one timeout left. Because they did call one of the, the first play of the second half. That was their second one. Shea out of the shotgun to throw with protection. Thomas said he has it at yeah, the 40 a good, for a gain of about a yard or two, and that's about all. That was a good tackle one-on-one -on -one there. That was Joe Boinko. Linebacker on the strong side for the Western Wayne defense, making the stop, and he kept Thomas Setti in bounds. That was the key factor. Two and a half minutes left here in the fourth. Second down and eight, Mid-Valley from its own 41. Shea will split Fiumi wide to the far side. Shea to throw, he'll keep, and now he is dragged down on the play by Andrew Slijinski, the right end of the Western Wayne defense. Big play. For a loss back to the 36-yard line. And now the clock is running with exactly two minutes left here in the football game. Third down and 13 for the Mid-Valley Spartans. Now, number one priority for Mid-Valley, pick up a first down. Keep number the drive one priority going. for Western Wayne, where is Tomasetti or Fiumi? Or, hey, well, listen, they have a lot of options. Now Shea will work out of the shotgun. 
Shea to throw. Plenty of time. Fires downfield and the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Munley, broken up in the secondary. Kyle Haynes was back there in company. Scott Walk also in on the coverage for the Wildcats. So it all comes down to this, my friends. One minute, 35 seconds left, fourth quarter. 41-38, the Cats. Fourth and 13 for the Spartans from their own 36-yard line. Here we go. Dan Wood and LaRusso split to the far side. Shea out of the shotgun, whistle. And I believe the Wildcats wanted a timeout. We'll go to a quick, quick break with 134 remaining in the fourth here on Adams Cable High School Football. Buck 34 on the clock, fourth quarter, 41-38 your yeah. score. Western Wayne, it's fourth down and 13 for Mid-Valley, the football on the Spartan 36-yard line. Now, we, uh, what Mid-Valley needs to do is get a little pressure on Shea, flush him out of the pocket if they can, but he can throw the football on the run. He can also take off. Low too. snap, Shea will roll to the right side, steps up, fires the football downfield. Wood, oh, his fingertips. Wood had wow. it in his hands and could not hang on to it at the 19-yard line. I tell you, on the run, perfect throw. Wood was open, had it, could not come up with the catch. Right off 40, his fingertips. 45-yard pass. That was, uh, that was right on the money, too. And the Western Wayne Wildcats will take over possession of the football with one minute and 24 seconds to play. You know, you have to wonder also, Shea was rolling to his right side. There was a lot of running room on that far side. That was the decision you had to make. Do yeah. you keep the football and go for the first or, you know, fire it downfield for an open Danny Wood? I think he made the right decision. He did. I, you know. I, I mean, it was there. I mean, it was a perfect pass. I, 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 just off his fingertips. I, you know, the, the defender was there. But he got he, he got it over the defender's hands, and it was right on the money. They got what they wanted. I mean, they had, you know, he had plenty for the first down. That wasn't a question about that. Well, here's the tight formation, and uh, Wildcats will snap the football, and the uh, clock never started. What's going on here? Did we have a timeout call by Mid Valley? Yeah, Mid Valley's final yeah. timeout. Their final timeout. Yeah. So we'll go to a break and return in just a moment on Adams Cable High School Football. You're ready for the big game, but how about your car? As you travel through downtown Carbondale, look for the classic yellow, blue, and red Sunoco sign. Drive in and fill up with the fuel of choice from Main Street Sunoco and get the finest performance from your car. At Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale, prompt courteous service is always assured. Congratulations to our local athletes and coaches for their hard work and dedication from the staff and management of Main Street Sunoco in Carbondale. What does it mean to be an expert? Does it mean getting the job done right? Or being able to pinpoint a problem and quickly find a solution? Whatever the meaning, the team at NJS are your experts in hydraulic and pneumatic components. So whether you need a custom hose built on the spot or a cylinder repaired from the ground up, the experts at NJS are there when you need them. And with the area's largest hose and fittings warehouse, NJS has thousands of the parts you need in stock and ready to go. NJS Route 6 Mayfield online at njsco.com. NJS is proud to call this area home and proud to sponsor our area athletes on Adams Cable Channel 7. Welcome back to the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden. 121 left in the fourth and the Western Wayne Wildcats have the football second down and 10 from the Spartan 36 yard line. All they have to do is uh, Hand off the football to Harp, and he will uh, go down in the backfield for a loss to the 40. And the clock now will begin to run. Boy, that I, made no sense. Yeah, yeah, I, you took a knee in first down. Why would you not yeah. take I mean, a why, knee? Why, why would you not take outside? the knee? Yeah. Because <laughs> I tell you, that defender almost took the handoff. Oof. 
So now the clock down to 55 seconds, and uh, Western Wayne is Let's going to take up. a look at that play clock, and they're going to try to run that clock right down to uh, the final seconds. They'll approach the line of scrimmage with uh, 13 on the shot clock, or on the uh, play clock, I should say, and now everyone will come in tight. And the play clock down to three seconds. They'll snap the football and take a knee. And uh, that should do it. What a football game here tonight in Varden as the Wildcats hang on for a very exciting 41-38 win over the Mid-Valley Spartans. Congratulations to Donnie McDonough and the Western Wayne Wildcats as uh, they will win it here tonight, 41-38. And uh, even their overall mark at two wins and two losses, while Mid-Valley will fall to no wins and four losses, but they are a much better football team than their record indicates. Absolutely. 40, 40 points scored in the second half, Steve. Wow. Unbelievable. A, an exciting game by all means. Uh, uh, a lot of points scored, a lot of action. Uh, momentum swings from um, from one team to the other. Good defensive plays when they needed them. And a uh, lot of offense. And a lot, <laughs> and a lot of offense yeah, was, a lot of is, is a is is an uh, unbelievable amount of offense that we saw today. It was an exciting game. You paid three dollars to get in this game. You got your money's worth. I I'd be willing to say this is probably better than the ESPN game that's on right now. Yeah, you think the ESPN game might not I might not make, make doubt it. as it's much exciting. action as this one. That's for sure. No way. Sure was exciting as uh, the Western Wayne Wildcats hang on for the 41-38 win. Now for Western Wayne, of course, uh, they will play at Holy Cross on Saturday, followed by a home game in Week 6 with Riverside. They go on the road at weeks on Week 7 at Montrose, Week 8 at Dunmore, Week 9 here at home with Honesale, Week 10 at Lakeland. We will have that game for you here on Channel 7. And a good luck to the Wildcats, and of course for the Spartans, good luck to the uh, Mid Valley football team as they will travel and take on. They will be at home with GAR coming up this uh, week and uh, be at Old Forge in week six, at Susquehanna in week seven, Holy Cross week eight at home with uh, Lackawanna Trail in week nine at home, and then week 10 they will play at Carbondale area. So uh, good luck to Dave Rebar and the Spartans in their upcoming uh, games in uh, high school football. So it was an exciting one, guys. Uh, you really couldn't beat all the action we had here tonight. So we'll set our sights on our next broadcast, which will be Friday night from the Andrew J. Serra Sports Complex in Carbondale, when the Chargers will host the Bucks of Dunmore. We'll have all of the action for you with the pregame show on the air at 645 here on Adams Cable Channel 7. Guys, your final thoughts? Well, Steve, uh, as we said, it was an exciting game. It was a, a game of, uh, of, uh, of great plays. It was a game of some mistakes, a game of, uh, of uh, some great defensive plays when it counted, and of, uh, by all means, some super offensive uh, endeavors out there today. Yeah, I, I agree with that, guys. Uh, you know, Western Wayne made the plays when they needed them. Uh, played a really a great first half, second half. You know, still their Achilles heel seems to be closing out games. Uh, mm. Really, they they really uh, <laughs> Coach McDonough aged a little bit on this <laughs> on this win. Well. Uh, but they'll get things right. They're still a young football team themselves. Mid Valley, on the other hand, I, like I said, really throwing caution to the wind. No pun intended up here tonight. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, they're the best 0 4 team in the area. No, no question about it. And I'll tell you what, uh, you're right. You with your statement before, Nick. GAR better look out because they're going to throw everything at them that they have next this this coming week. And that is going to wrap it up here at the Sharky Rossetti Sports Complex in Varden. Your final score once again, Western Wayne 41, Mid-Valley 38. For Glenn Muskowski and Nick Homick, I'm Steve Young. Till next time, so long from Varden. This Adams Cable Channel 7 presentation of high school football between the Western Wayne Wildcats and the Mid-Valley Spartans was brought to you by Adams Cable Service, Figlamini Drugstore Carbondale, locally owned and trusted since 1929, Tom's Floor Shop Main Street Childs, Nick's Excavating and Paving Carbondale, by your one-stop lumber and hardware center, the Waymart Building Center, by your Napa Auto Parts Store, 
Tonkin Auto Supply, Carbondale. White's Crossing Sports Shop. Main Street Sunoco, Carbondale. Beston's Body Shop and Collision Center, Carbondale. NJS Systems and Controls, Route 6 Mayfield. Lawrence A. Gabriel Funeral Homes with locations at 74 North Main Street and 2 Hospital Street, Carbondale. The starting lineups for today's game are brought to you by Roselle Department Store in Carbondale. Join us next Friday night for football action from the Andrew J. Sarah Sports Complex when the Carbondale area Chargers clash with the Dunmore Bucks here on Adams Cable Channel 7.